and i think uh, it's an initiative taken by dr samendu samanta secretary of the indian arthroscopy society it has been very popular it helps in inculcating uh, arthroscopy interest in uh, in uh, different states and working in close association state orthopedic associations definitely help us in um, having a uh, good coordination between the national society and the state chapters and the state societies so this is a welcome initiative and i must congratulate dr samanta for initiating this in this series today we are working closely with uh, rajasthan orthopedic society rajasthan orthopedic society has got a uh, credential of a academic uh, uh, inclination not today but from years together their annual conference roza con has been well attended uh, for uh, from last so many years uh, by uh, good faculty both nationally and internationally as well Uh, we are thankful definitely uh, to roza con to coordinate with us uh, indian arthroscopy society and special thanks to dr rajesh goyal the president of roza and dr rahul kata the secretary of roza who have agreed uh, to uh, coordinate with indian arthroscopy society for this webinar we have an excellent uh, faculty including moderators and speakers today uh, our moderators today are dr sachin jain and dr saurabh mathur both uh, well renowned arthroscopy surgeons uh, of rajasthan and uh, the list of faculty is uh, definitely impressive because we have dr rajiv gupta dr vikram mahaskar dr sumit banerjee from aims uh, dr prashant modi uh, dr rajiv raman our own executive committee member from indian arthroscopy society and dr sr sundar rajan who is vice uh, uh, joint secretary of indian arthroscopy society uh, 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 i may please request dr samanta to initiate this uh, program today uh, yes. after this uh, we'll have some mm -hmm. words uh, from uh, dr rahul and uh, dr rajesh goyal uh, followed by the academic proceedings dr samanta please okay thank you ips this is a great honor and privilege that uh, we, the, the, both the president and secretary of uh, the rajasthan orthopedic association rosa they have agreed to do the meeting with the ias because we are doing this chapter meetings with all the states so that we can have the close interaction with everybody and uh, we, the ias is uh, all loan to everybody like this way so uh, yesterday today morning only from my dear friend sora because sora was the main person who is uh, making the program how it was possible and sandeep so yesterday today morning i could know the one of my senior faculty from the rajasthan orthopedic association we lost pavan to our well sir so i will request the president of the rajasthan rosa to just few words on him because it is a, really we have we are losing some of our colleagues in different streams so i i think um just uh, your sir from your side one or two, some lines from that so that we can this will pay, pay homage to him rest in peace sir सौरभ हाँ सर आई थिंक दिस राजेश गोयल सर आई कैनोट गोयल सर इज दर गोयल सर को अनम्यूट करना पड़ेगा जी सर आप ठीक है या या विद द डीप हार्ट आई हैव टू अनाउंस दैट वन ऑफ माय फोर इयर्स जूनियर डॉक्टर पवन गोयल सकम टू डेथ ही वाज सफरिंग फ्रॉम कोविड एंड ही वाज अ वेरी डाउन टू अर्थ एंड अ वेरी अंबल ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन वर्किंग इन एसएमएस हॉस्पिटल एज अ मेडिकल ऑफिसर एंड ही वाज वेरी जेंटल आई एम रियली सॉरी टू से दैट बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंट सिचुएशन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस मिनेस he has to lost uh, his uh, uh, life and uh, it was a deep uh, deep uh, loss to not only to his family but to also to uh, roza uh, rajasthan orthopedic surgeons association thank you very much thank you sir so i am unsharing the screen with your permission sir yeah okay so uh, ips we can go ahead saurabh and uh, sachin you take over with the scientific yeah. session and accordingly we can go ahead with the uh, sir, we can invite uh, president and uh, secretary uh, rahul kattar to say yes yeah. so let yes. us uh, 
have uh, uh, Rajesh Goel sir. Rajesh Goel. Yes, Rajesh Goel sir. Rajesh Goel. Uh, I uh, uh, on behalf of Rajasthan Orthopedic Surgeons Association, I welcome you all. It is indeed a, a great achievement for Rajasthan Orthopedic Surgeons Association that we have been associated with Indian Arthroscopic Society. I I am really indebted to President Dr. I P S Oberai. and swarnendra samanta the secretary who is very good friend of mine that they have associated and uh, they are benefiting not only the whole of the roza members but also the whole of the uh, faculty and uh, members of the roza uh, in this uh, endeavor to develop and to uh, nurture the various procedures of the arthroscopic society thank you very much thank you sir rahul sir yeah so thank you so much indian arthroscopy society to having this webinar with uh, roza so we are having a good young faculty from rajasthan and they doing uh, very good work with indian arthroscopy society this webinar be very helpful for members in learning about the meniscus i think we should start with the proceedings thank you so much again the office bearers of uh, indian arthroscopy society thank you thank you sir thank you. for your kind words i i think uh, now saurav and uh, yes. sachin you take over the scientific scientific yes. proceedings yeah. so saurav okay. start yes uh, sachin you please start, huh? start okay so uh, we'll start with the first talk uh, first talk is by dr rajiv gupta and the talk is on meniscus repair technique so may i ask dr rajiv to uh, share his presentation and start the Okay. Doctor Rajiv, any problem? Yeah. No, no, no. Just. Uh, uh please go to the first slide yeah start from uh, yeah uh good evening to all play start from the I, first uh, really my pleasure to uh, have uh, my presentation on combined rows and is dies and i must congratulate to is team especially samantha sir and ips and dalit uh, for their uh, amazing job uh, in this lockdown they have uh, conducted a marvelous uh, webinar so far uh Uh, uh and uh, before starting i really want to pay homage to our colleague dr pawan royal which now not with us no more and uh, my topic is meniscus repair uh, before i start i should uh, put this save the meniscus uh, always we try to try to save the meniscus uh, though the meniscectomy and meniscal repairs results are same but meniscal repair has a better prognosis in long run as i am the first if i talk uh, some tears uh for example this uh, radial tear is uh, sure uh, this require meniscectomy we can't repair because it is a uh, in a white white zone and uh, all though we know that, that uh, meniscectomy has a more contact focal point contact stress on cartilage lead to arthritis as compared to uh, medial side lateral side it is more because of uh, their convex anatomy they have more chances of arthritic changes after meniscectomy but uh, meniscect Meniscectomy is only justifiable when meniscus is causing more trouble than it was. Then always, always have a proper judgment while removing or uh, you are you just think upon the meniscectomy. As I'm a first, this is some good uh, literature that suggests that meniscal repairs do have a high reoperation rate, but they have a better long-term outcome. Uh, uh because as i am first speaker let's discuss some anatomic part on the meniscus meniscus uh in dpjs 1936 kings uh, demonstrated that meniscus have a capacity to heal because they their synovium have a blood supply and after 50 years in paper in american journal of sports medicine 
they with the india ink preparation they showed that peripheral part of meniscus is well vascularized if we, we try to uh, repair them they must heal and of course now uh, uh, as per uh, we have three zones red 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 white and white zone and this uh, how this is how we uh, decide the tear where it is in which zone and chances of uh, repair healing depends of on on the which uh, the zone is involved uh, as this uh, uh, we have more tear on the medial side because uh, medial meniscus is less mobile as compared to lateral meniscus we have classification uh, we have somewhere root tears we have some fraying of meniscus oblique tear horizontal radial and horizontal tear leads to bucket handle we have discoid meniscus vertical tears and complex tear also let's start one by one this is horizontal tear uh, starting from inside to periphery this is what usually we get uh, and the degenerative type of meniscus tear this is all in the three zones the healing rates are horizontal tears are less this is one of the most uh, commonest tear we see it is more in the red red or red white zone this is what seen the with acl we see this longitudinal tear this is some arthroscopic picture how we see this type of tear uh, radial tear we already uh, uh, seen one video this is radial tear It's starting from the right red zone and going up inside uh this type of tears because more uh, are they are in the white red zone they 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 uh, need partial meniscectomy and balanced periphery uh this is what we see in chronic acl tear bucket handle meniscus tear more common on the medial side we have root tears one of my colleague is going to talk on this this is we have four type of root tears uh one uh, one is partial two is complete three is extending like a bucket handle t and four is with the root tear uh ramp lesions uh, of course nowadays because we are now start looking more on the posterior medial and posterior lateral portals we are start looking because somewhere they start affecting our if we miss them they start affecting our ac result also uh for me ideal tear is uh, acute vertical longitudinal tear that is in the red red or red white zone of course uh, in the vascular periphery as we discussed with the zonal uh, uh, rule and young patient who are compliant to physiotherapy and, and with a stable knee this is must for any any meniscal repair uh, we have common three technique inside out outside in all inside i start with the all inside technique of course every meniscal repair require basic steps tear preparation with uh, some rest for diamond rest to get the uh, some bleeding point you can use the nano uh, needles to puncture uh, around the capsules and uh, after that you oppose your tear edges and with any device uh, we have lot of uh, uh, all inside devices available in the market uh, everyone is good depending upon your experience uh, this is what i used uh, uh, fast fix uh, the advantage of this device is of course Uh, with you can each you can reach up to the each part of medial meniscus and independent of independent of surroundings of tissue no medial meniscus hyperstability and chances of neurovascular injury and its is complication is less with the all inside technique if joint is not too tight you don't require any uh, medial uh, mcl fire testing you require some this instruments uh, is cannula with diamond rasp and not cutter pushers this is a short video for how uh, uh, this is a bucket handle meniscal tear uh, this is what you first probe it and use a diamond rasp to get a bleeding uh, some bleeding punctate point on the both sides of meniscus and after that you uh, just uh, uh, measure me uh, with a uh, calib uh, calibrated probe you just measure the depth and thickness of the uh, meniscus and uh, and after that you fix your uh, target device at a particular point how much you want you want to go deep inside the tissue because uh, close to that uh, if we talk about the posterior horn of medial meniscus we have the neurovascular structure is close and always do inflection the chances of uh, injuries are very less 
uh, this is a fast fix device and the configuration of uh, 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 the suture are uh, short uh, oblique vertical is uh, good uh, for the hoop stresses and they are stable most stable suture configuration uh, and uh, this is my second uh, device uh, for Uh, this video is a uh, chap of around age uh, 34 years with uh, three years old. Uh, Rajiv, so you are not audible. Hello. Uh, uh, this is paper in 2019. All inside techniques seems to allow for the most anatomic repair with the greatest preservation of surrounding soft tissues. Uh, after that, uh, second is inside out technique. Uh, again, same technique, tear uh, preparation with your rasp. And uh, sometimes you require posterolateral and posterolateral safety incision if you are going more on the, on the posterior one third of meniscal repair. Otherwise, uh, for me, all inside uh, technique is posterior one third and rest of anterior two third with the inside out or outside in technique. Uh, this is what I uh, use uh, two vertical pre band uh, uh, zone specific cannulas, and uh, the suture configuration can be vertical or horizontal mattress. And uh, of course, uh, need for needle, we have to put uh, to post if we are repairing more on the medial side, uh, we require posterior medial. Side. Is in around 470 centimeter posterior to MCL, and like that on the posterior lateral side to avoid injury to uh, uh, peroneal nerve, and you put a uh, around four centimeter incision posterior to lateral collateral ligament. This is what we have in the nowadays to have zone specific cannulas to uh, uh, to uh, throughout 360 repair of meniscus with uh, all inside technique. Uh, this is a drive demo uh, uh, of uh, how I do. We have preloaded the uh, cannulas uh, for that, uh, uh, that are disposable, or you can use the yes, cannulas also available. Uh, with that, uh, we can repair uh, 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 with this technique. The advantage thus part of is uh, you are uh, from inside to out, you can play with your needle and you can put your sutures which way you want to put. Uh, uh, this is uh, one short video for this. And this is a uh, cannula pre-bent. Uh, one uh, suture is already uh, through the tissue and another is through the capsule. See, if I, I put uh, all suture above the meniscus get clipped and after that, I uh, one more suture from under surface of meniscus to make it balanced. And this is a combined uh, uh, way of repair, uh, inside out, all inside, or somewhere, if it is a more anterior, you can put your uh, outside in technique, outside in suture. Uh, this is my for last post for post reform. one more suture to make balance of repair. Uh, results are good enough. Uh, the failure rate is around 10, 10 to 15% in each, uh, uh, each uh, studies. Uh, uh, for me now, outside one more technique is outside in for anterior to third. Uh, this is uh, one of the simplest way and cheapest way to repair. You can have your 218 years needle 
it passed from outside to in in uh, in, uh, in the joint under vision and uh, this is how uh, uh, i just put one incision over the uh, one incision uh, close to where i supposed to get all the suture out uh, so that i uh, i don't put my knots over the tissue it uh, just lay down in the capsule directly uh, this is how uh, i do my uh, uh, in the tissue. Uh, this is a long video and I uh, just uh, put my uh, fiber wire to that. I don't take uh, the loop out, out because sometimes it gets trapped into the tissue and the synovium. I always try to uh, keep it inside and just take it out from that part. And uh, uh, we don't require any specific number for this. I think this is, the, uh, uh, this is what we can uh, do it uh, very in a cheap way. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is my uh, eighteen gauge needle coming from outside to in. Or two above one down, depending upon the how big your tear is, uh, the number of uh, sutures uh, uh, I just keep them uh, nine to ten mm apart. This is how the outside technique with outside technique the meniscus repair can be performed. Uh, one more. Uh... Rajiv sir, uh, just uh, last uh, three, four minutes more. This is again uh, outside in technique. I don't remove this as I already told you. I don't remove this uh, loop out of the joint. Helps. Help. It does not uh, help me to untangle. Not. It does not tangle in the soft tissues and synovium. Uh, one suture is down. Uh, down surface of meniscal tissue. This is how you can balance it. It help. Uh, it, it help in balancing your meniscus and avoid upliftment of the they see how beautiful it gets settled down one more uh, and and and, uh, and uh, i think uh, uh, the chronicity of uh, uh, doesn't matter at all if your meniscal tissue quality is good enough you go ahead and repair them irrespective of how old they are uh, uh, this is already the See, uh, the result again, it's uh, almost as uh, the results are uh, same as uh, we do inside out or outside in. The failure rate is in each general age literature is around 10 to 15 percent. Uh, meniscal root repair, how we do, uh, my uh, colleague is going to show you. Uh, nowadays, I, if I get an old uh, chronic uh, uh, tear buccanella, I start putting a uh, fibrin clot somewhere in between the tear, in between the uh, meniscal fragments and I do some bone drilling also if it is an isolated uh, meniscal tear. Uh, factors, I think age, fixation technique, time from injury doesn't matter at all. If your tissue is good enough, uh, we can repair it successfully. And uh, of course, complex tear uh, uh, failure rate higher as compared to simple or pocket handle tears. For me, uh, if you have acute vertical with long 
which would not take us in red, red, or red, white zone, young patient, stable knee, and patient is compliant to physiotherapy, I think we should preserve and repair them. If we have uh, still, uh, if we have complex fear, uh, and if, uh, you just do partial manisectomy in white zone and rest of tissue, you leave them and repair it. Because whatever collagen you leave it, it helps in uh, rehabilitation of patient. So if you have, you just little in doubt, you just take out partial tissue and rest of you repair it. Uh, of course, uh, sometimes uh, 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 this uh, uh, takes a lot of time if uh, the your experience is less, uh, your, your assistant is not good enough, it increases the operative time. Of course, uh, the surgery cost also increases and uh, the rehabilitation gets slow with the uh, meniscal repair. And of course, sometimes uh, there, there is chances of failure and patient may require uh, repeated surgery in future. But uh, uh, for posterior one third, of course, we all agreed all inside suture devices and a device of choice. For me, if we have a large bucket under the tier, hybrid technique is good to use uh, for posterior one third, all inside, for middle, inside, out, or for anterior, outside, in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv uh, Gupta, sir. Uh, very nice presentation. May I invite uh, Dr. Vikram Maskar for his uh, uh, presentation on meniscus bucket handle tear repair. Uh, his uh, technique has been published in Journal of Arthroscopy. So we are looking forward to that presentation. Please, can you present, Dr. Vikram? Thank you so much, Team Rajasthan and uh, the Indian Arthroscopy Society for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, to present in front of such an esteemed panel. And the topic given to me is an enigma in itself because it's not a very uncommon uh, scenario that most of us find ourselves in. The interesting part of it is more often than not, it is in accordance with an ACL tear and the extent of these tears are rather, ra are rather large. Hence, the economic factors being in India come into play here. So more cost-effective techniques are the need of the day. So this is typically what we see. And this is not a very unfamiliar sight that we've all seen when we put in an arthroscope for an ACL reconstruction. And the intention is to do this. And we hope we do this wherever possible. That is repair and not remove. Well, the standard techniques are very aptly put by Dr. Rajiv are the outside in. And my preference is for the body and anterior horn, the inside out for the body and posterior horn, and an all inside which could be an anchor type of device like the fast fix or the meniscus cinch or a lot of other ultra, uh, you know, a lot of other devices by companies which, which rely on suture anchors and sutures attached to them, as well as this technique that's been recently published by me, which is a cost effective and a true all inside technique to repair a bucket handle tear. So before we start a relevant anatomy, so if we look at the uh, meniscus, you know, most of its Blood supply through the middle genicular artery is towards the periphery. And angiographies have shown these vessels being there and hence tears in the red, red or red, white zone where vascularity is best, heal best. And our intention is to repair whatever tears that come in this region. Safety, lateral side, be careful because you have the vessel and the common peroneal nerve. Now, if you look at the vessel, it's only two or three millimeters behind your needle when you insert it posteriorly. So the direction of the needle should be away from the vessel. But the common peroneal nerve, contrary to belief, is actually quite far away. So it's very unlikely that you'll actually puncture it when you uh, do your repair. And there have been cadaveric studies wherein you've tried to purposely puncture the vessel and nerve, and you can see these devices, and you're rather far away from them, but the vessel is a true danger on the lateral side, posterior horn, hence very important to be to be careful while placing your devices through them. Before we start positioning and facilitation maneuvers, so unless you access that area or see that area well, you cannot repair it well. So my preferred position is a flexed position of the knee, about 70 degrees of flexion with a side support and a bolster distally. I tie a tunique but never inflate it for any of my knee arthroscopies. So it's only a backup plan. Now, let's start with medial meniscus, the MCL pie crusting, which is a facilitation maneuver. So, typically, supine patient, side support, surgeon between the limb and the table, that's me standing there, 
Now, with a lateral thrust of my hip, I can give a valgus force to the medial aspect of the knee. And this is truly what I'm doing here to cause adequate opening on the medial side. Now, this is from a different view. I'm doing the same thing. And to get better uh, visibility of the medial aspect, external rotation of the foot helps very well. So this is a maneuver that one can use. Now, if you get away with this, with adequate access posteriorly, you're fine. If not, you need to know the course of the MCL, and adductor tubercle, medial epicondyle, and this is typically where the deep MCL runs. I like to do my pie crusting in a tight knee like this in the mid substance. So you can see a meniscus tear, highly improbable to reach. So first palpate the area of the deep MCL, and through the mid substance, I introduce an 18 gauge needle through a single puncture, and then make multiple trephinations over the mid part of the MCL, and only a single puncture uh, that reduces pain in the patient post-operative and does the job. So as you're puncturing it, you feel a little pop in the knee and some bleeding inside. That's when you know that your job is more or less done. If not, you continue doing that a little by little and give a valgus force with your hip uh, against the foot. And as soon as your giveaway is there, you get adequate access and there you are ready to start your meniscus repair. Now, before we move on to repairing it, it's important to reduce your meniscus anatomically. And this is very relevant, especially for tears that have been locked for a very long time in the knee, like this T, like this tear. Now, the anatomy is extremely difficult to find out, looking at this, which is the superior surface, which is the inferior surface. First, look at the tear, see the extent. In this tear, it's going all the way to the body that you're seeing here. You can see the meniscus uh, part, the tone part, and a little flap beyond it. Now, this being in a red-white zone, I would more often than not only repair it. So I always repair these tears, and I like to repair them wherever possible. After doing my adequate pie crusting to see my joint, I then use a probe. So spend time in this step to anatomically reduce the meniscus. Figure out your top and bottom of the meniscus. Only if you probe it and put it in place properly and spend some time will you actually at times be surprised that what you thought on top was actually to go in the bottom. Then debride the part which is not really going to heal, like the flap component here. While doing this, very important not to scuff off a vital part of the meniscus that has blood supply. Very important to get adequate access and portal placement so that you don't scuff your cartilage. So you need to be adequately roomy in your joint to be able to introduce instruments. Once this is done, again, see, so what I thought was up was actually down. And this is anatomical. So the meniscus had actually flipped over itself. So once I do this, spending time gradually seeing the extent of the tear and using my probe, I reduce it anatomically. And now I am ready to start my repair once it sits the way it should sit. And then you can facilitate a repair like this by a hybrid technique that I have used. Now, outside in my way, how do I do it? This is a typical knee. This is your tear pictorically. I first palpate where my tear is and then introduce an LP needle from the capsule introduced into the meniscus. So gradually manipulate your way, introduce it into the meniscus, normal 18 gauge uh, LP needle. Then I always prefer vertical mattress. So I, I hardly use horizontal mattress. Then I go through my capsule now you have both these needles, one from the capsule, one from the capsule through the meniscus. So once you have this, I'm now ready to introduce my PDS cut in two. So I put them, cut my PDS into two, one through the inferior needle, one through the superior needle. And now using a virtual cannula, introducing my grasper, I pull both these out through my medial portal, then tie them to a 2-0 fiber wire externally, and then pull this whole uh, construct and my needles backwards and then you can see your fiber wires very beautifully going into the meniscus. Now when they go into it and you tug on the fiber wires externally, your meniscus sits where it should sit. So once it sits and you finish your ACL reconstruction, I always tighten them under vision. So I have my scope inside, I've connected my two threads, delivered my two ends through it, used a knot pusher, and with multiple throws, either a simple or a sliding knot, I have approximated my meniscus here. 
and you can see it sitting anatomically. So don't make the mistake of just tying them and then looking inside, you may be surprised. And at the end of it, you have a, a relatively well-reduced meniscus that's sitting anatomically and which is stable, which is very important. Now we go on to the inside out technique. Now, this is what I typically use. Now, this is a locked meniscus tear. I will not go through the process of reducing it, which I've already told you all. You put it back in place. I like single lumen cannula with serrated ends because they sit very well on the meniscus surface. And once you've made it sit there, you put in needles which have a fiber wire to or tied at their uh, ends. You need a good assistant that pulls these needle out posteromedially and delivers them with an artery forceps. And you should know how to do it. So, so explain to your assistants in advance and make sure it's somebody who's used to doing it regularly. Then you go through the capsule and you can see I've put multiple uh, inside out sutures here with 2 fiber wire. And posterior horn, you can see that I've used vertical mattress uh, all inside uh, uh, sutures. Once I'm done with this, you repeat the same steps again and again. Again, my tying technique is under vision. So I always put in my arthroscope when I'm tying my knots posteromedially because I should be sure that my uh, repair is secure. And this is your anatomically reduced meniscus at the end of it. And I was lucky to have rescoped this patient six weeks later. And uh, you can see that the same person has healed up quite well. You, cannot, you can see semblances of the threads posteriorly, which are whitish. So though they are non-absorbable, they do have... Uh, some element of degeneration over a period of time. Now the hybrid technique. So this is a typical bucket handle case. I'll take you through how I go through, uh, you know, repairing them by using all inside and inside out, outside in devices. So this is a rather complex tear. So you have tears at two levels. You've got a tear uh, very periphery and another tear internally. The internal tear is not complete. So first is to freshen your ends. Most important, only a vascular bed will heal. So using a shaver first, followed by a diamond rasp, which I use. Again, access, very important. Do not destroy your cartilage. That's most important. You're repairing your meniscus to preserve the cartilage. I use the sleeve to basically even reduce my meniscus apart from introducing my fast fix device. The first goes through the periphery. I hear my click. I get it out. Then I make sure I don't go through that incomplete tear. I go a little more peripheral to it take my second bite in a vertical configuration and then tug on my suture so that my meniscus sits anatomically. Now the bite should be taken at equal distances so that your meniscus doesn't flip upwards. Still, there's a slight flip up. So I like to put sutures below. So here I'm going to use a horizontal configuration because finances at times are an issue. And now that I've stabilized it, I can afford to use my horizontal configuration here. So I put one more centrally followed by more peripherally, and then it sits back in place. Now I move on to my body, or part of the posterior horn in clinging on the body again, one through the meniscus, one through the capsule, at equal distances, tug on it, and the meniscus sits perfectly. So equal distances gives you an anatomically sitting meniscus, followed by my outside in technique for the body, same as I described earlier, the uh, PDS sutures, pull them back. This works very easy, very cheap, uh, rather than using those uh, loops that you get, which can complicate things. Now, I've decided that there's a little too much of a gap, so I use another one in between and outside in, and I've got my meniscus sitting back in place, and it's quite stable. I go ahead, do my ACL reconstruction, and then tie my meniscus up under vision at the end of the procedure. And I, again, did a second look because I operated on his other knee six months later, and here you can see that so much synovium grows over a meniscus over a period of time. So your meniscus is preserved. The cartilage looks good. You can see this is the way it looks. So when you tug on it, the meniscus is completely sitting with the capsule on the periphery. I can lift it up here and I can, you can also see the posterior horn uh, as I go posteriorly here and the root, which is stable and the cartilage, which is well preserved in this case and the meniscus being absolutely stable. We come to my last uh, presentation on my technique, which I was fortunate enough to publish in the Journal of Arthroscopy, which is a very cost-effective and effective technique in my hands. And I use these more often than not for all my bucket handle tears, whether medial or lateral these days, wherever I can. So two techniques. Technique A is when your 
I use a knee scorpion. So you have a bucket handle lateral meniscus tear here, as you can see. I use a knee scorpion device to do my repair. When you can get the knee scorpion to go all the way to the peripheral aspect of the tear, technique A works very well. So those who are used to shoulder surgery, this should be reasonable cakewalk, but just in a slightly more constrained space. So once you go to the periphery, I take a bite, make sure the needle is tilted and doesn't go into the cartilage, pull out my uh, 2 o fiber wire. So I have two ends, one going through the periphery and the other coming under my central portion uh, of, the, of the meniscus, followed by my next bite through the most central portion of my meniscus. Spend time that the scorpion goes through the substance because more often than not, if you don't, you might come out through the tear. So once this is done, my lower aspect, I take a second bite and now watch, I always tilt my scorpion to avoid injury and breakage of the tip as well as scuffing of the cartilage. You have two ends of your uh, 2O fiber wire coming out through your cannula and then you can either use a sliding knot or a simple knot with multiple throws and secure your meniscus back in place. This has the added advantage of not having any neurovascular complications. I put a couple of more devices and here you have a stable meniscus at the end of it and I'm happy to do my ACL at the end of this particular case. Now, once we are done with this, we go on to the next technique, uh, which is technique B. Now, technique B is when the jaws of the scorpion can't reach the periphery directly through the central portion of the meniscus. This is quite an important issue, which a lot of times we face because the lateral meniscus is a lot larger than the medial meniscus in an antero posterior length posteriorly. So here you can see this is the peripheral and this is the central portion. So the lateral side is very roomy and you don't need opening uh, maneuvers like the pie crusting, which is good. So I go directly through the tear to the peripheral aspect, turn my uh, knee scorpion, take a bite with a 2O fiber wire, and then I pull it out through my cannula. Now I have one arm coming through the periphery and one coming out through the tear. So I need to get it below my central portion of the meniscus. I use a, a crochet to do that. And here I get my lower end of the tear through my uh, passport cannula. And now I'm ready, same technique as technique A, take a bite through the central portion of the meniscus, and then you go ahead and uh, tie your simple knot with multiple throws or a, a, a sliding knot could be an SMC or whatever other knot you are comfortable using. I used to do sliding, now I'm quite comfortable with simple knots, they work very well. And uh, you've got your one knot here, you can put a couple of more devices and there you have a stable tear at the end of it that's not coming into the joint and you're good to go and do your ACL reconstruction. Thank you very much. Uh, so a very beautiful presentation by Dr. Vikram. Uh, I think a lot of meniscus would be saved after this presentation rather than removed. So uh, may I call upon uh, Dr. Sumit Banerjee for his next talk of, on meniscus ramp lesions treatment. So Dr. Sumit, please take over. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> thank you to IAS and Rosa for this wonderful webinar. And on a personal note, I would like to pay homage to uh, Dr. Pavan, who passed away yesterday. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with him during my postgraduate days in SMS, so it's a bit of a personal thing to me. Uh, so we'll start about the ramp lesions. Uh, so what is a ramp essentially? So it's uh, essentially uh, entails a meniscal capsular separation of the posterior part of the medial meniscus. So this is essentially a ramp lesion. It was one of the special variants of medial meniscal injury. You can find a association with ACL injuries. It was originally described by Strobel in 1982, and this is his original line, that it's a longitudinal tear, 2.5 centimeter in length, and located at the meniscal capsular junction. Uh, in terms of epidemiology, there's been a lot of studies going on around uh, how prevalent it is, and the incidence has been variedly reported, ranging from 9.3 to 17 percent of cases uh, with ACL injury. Uh, some reports uh, quoted to be even higher if you combine the pediatric and uh, adolescent ACL groups. Uh, there are a number of risk factors which are associated with a slightly higher incidence of uh, uh, meniscus injury. So this is uh, one of the articles by uh, Chala and the Laprade group, 
and this is another one. Uh, this, both of them are published on 2018-19, where they talk about the risk factors and uh, what are is important. Uh, so male sex obviously is one of the most important factors uh, epidemiologically as a risk factor. Young patients, especially below the age of 30, have uh, been found to have a higher incidence of uh, ramp lesions. Contact injury, again, uh, has a very high uh, incidence. It's up to about 41% as compared to around 7, 17% or 11% in uh, non-contact injuries. Chronicity of injury, the repeated uh, micro, uh, micro trauma and the micro uh, instability episodes tend to increase the incidence of uh, uh, the ramp lesion. Also, the presence of a concomitant lateral meniscal injury is a risk factor to have a uh, ramp lesion. So now the point is, uh, this was removed, reported by Strobel in 1982, and still we don't talk too much about it, precisely because it's a hidden lesion. It doesn't really add to any symptoms. Uh, there are no clinical signs per se on physical examination. The MRI itself also has very low sensitivity to diagnose it, and it can be easily missed on a standard diagnostic arthroscopy through the anterior part of the examination of the So now, Coming to biomechanical considerations, why it is important. So it's been variously described as a posterior medial instability, if you can call it that. So this is a this paper has been published in 2020 itself and talks about an unrecognized posterior medial instability in ramp lesions. So A, they increase the forces on a reconstructed ACL. So the chances of your graft failing are slightly higher if you have a concomitant ramp lesion that is left untreated. Secondly, uh, it's been found in these are cadaveric studies that there's a significant increase in both internal and external rotation laxity at all knee flexion angles if there is a untreated ramp lesion. And finally, isolated ACL reconstruction patients with a ramp lesion, it falls short of the normal kinematics and may have some residual laxity. So that's why it's important for us to actually go in and manage that. So now we come to how to diagnose this. So though First of all, in, in terms of investigations, uh, in MRI, most, you will not really find it mentioned in many reports because most radiologists are not aware. If you have one that works closely with you, it is a good point to sensitize them about it. Uh, secondly, most MRIs are done in extension, lying down, so which can lead to the masking of the lesion. The lesion just falls over itself and it's not that specific. So MRI tends to have a moderate sensitivity, but very high specificity. Uh, the, one of the most specific signs is the hyperintense signal between the meniscus and the capsule. Uh, secondly, bone bruising in the posterior medial table plateau is another very indicative sign. So if you look at it, uh, this is the menisco, tibial uh, menisco capsule separation on the sad section on a T2 image. And second, this is the posterior medial uh, tibial plateau bruising on an MRI. Then we come to arthroscopy. Obviously, it's the gold standard. You go and see it. So uh, during a diagnostic arthroscopy, uh, the posterior medial compartment is visualized using the transnotch maneuver, also called the Gilkis view. So this involves advancing the scope. You go between the knee, uh, PCL and the lateral wall of the medial femoral condyle, and you keep the knee in flexion at that time, and external rotation during the process will help you visualize it. So if you have a look at it, so this is essentially where you're aiming to go to. This is the medial femoral condyle, this is the PCL, you go in between this. And as you're given flexion, you're given an external rotation force, the space kind of opens up and allows you to go in. So I tend to, I tend to position my patients in 90 degrees of flexion. I also use, uh, what, what Vikram says, I also stand in between the patient and leg and the bed and use it to give the valgus force uh, and external rotation facilitator. Uh, so this is essentially a small video of the transnotch maneuver. So if you can see, this is the medial femoral condyle, this is the PC. And as you go in and if you give in a just little, a little bit of valgus stress and the knee just opens up and you're into the posterior medial compartment. There you can visualize the uh, making for a portal and the ramp. Now, secondly, this is once you've gone in, this is the entire ramp being visualized. You can use your camera angles to visualize the ramp throughout. In this case, it was an extremely nice and healthy ramp. And then once you, again, as I just talked about, the Gilkes view, you go in, you come out, and then you can proceed on with your the AC reconstruction of the H track. So now coming to the classification, uh, Thanot et al. has classified it according to five types. I think Dr. Rajiv mentioned it in one of his slides. Uh, type one is essentially the uh, separation of the uh, 
uh, Minister Tegel Legament and a tier. Uh, type 2, 3, 4, 5 is essentially along with the uh, meniscal capsule separation. Alongside, it, it also describes injuries to the peripheral part of the meniscus per se. So 2 and 3 are partial lesions uh, through the superior or the inferior surface. And type 4 is essentially a complete lesion. And type 5 is a double meniscal lesion. So these essentially describe the lesions, uh, the peripheral medial meniscus alongside the meniscal tibial ligament there. So now coming to assessing the lesion. Uh, uh, so it, this involves the creation of a standard posterior medial portal. So once you find out that there is a ramp lesion, you go in and create your uh, posterior medial portal. So with the knee 90 degrees of flexion, a needle is introduced to the uh, posterior medial part of the joint. Uh, the point of the needle entry is about 10 to 12 millimeters posteriorly along the knee joint line on the medial side. So at this point, you first palpate it and then use your transillumination to help avoid any uh, neurovascular injury, chances of a neurovascular injury. So a cannula is placed to ease the passage of instruments. And once you put in a cannula, uh, probe is then advanced through the posterior medial portal over a cannula and then you probe at it, pull at it to see what is the extent of the lesion and how much mobility is there in the lesion per se. So uh, managing the lesion, so they're practically, if you practically consider it in, uh, in spite of the type five uh, classifications, they essentially can be grouped into two or three lesions. So first is the partial lesion. These are less than 10 millimeters long and they're stable on probing rather than more important than the length is probably that the stability on probing. They are not, the meniscal uh, capsular ligament, ligament is not completely separated, right? So you have got some part of it attached and it does not move that much at probing. Complete lesions on the other hand have uh, separated completely and move a lot. And they usually about 10 to 25 millimeters in length. So now coming to the management of partial lesions. Uh, so stable lesions can be left unrepaired. Usually they are under 10 millimeter, can be stretched up to 15, but most more often than not around 10 mm. Uh, you can just go and use your uh, RAS or a traffine or a shaver through the posterior medial cannula and just freshen the ends a bit, and then you can just leave it at that. For the unstable or the complete lesions, uh, again, you deparide gently prior to the repair, use your shaver or a, a RAS as a uh, comfortable video. And then you do a vertical suture repair using fiber wire sutures. So the arthritis has got a suture lasso. This is a 25 degree curved suture hook. It's a site specific. It's the right curve for the left side and the left curve for the right side. And it is it makes your life a lot easier when you're trying to pass the sutures through the posterior medial portal. The sutures are applied medial to lateral to allow for a full repair of the lesion. And try and keep the knots towards the capsular side. So, uh, so this is uh, the a complete lesion of the ramp lesion. And this is trephination, I'm probing it in. And then I've used a shaver to freshen it. And then through the middle, we put on a suture, uh, usual vertical matrices, and that's your completed ramp repair. So post op protocol, uh, we tend to keep the patients with ramp lesion repairs are allowed ROM exercises, restricted up to 90 degrees of flexion for the first three to four weeks. And then we gradually progress to a full knee range of motion by about well, say six to eight weeks. Uh, beyond this, a standard ACL rehab protocol is advised. Uh, as regards to weight bearing status, again, if it's just one or two sutures, I usually tend to put in a, a suture at every around seven mm or so. So for a 15 to 20, 15 mm lesion, you usually have two sutures for about 20, 25, you get two, three or four. So if there are two sutures or so, then I'll just, one or two sutures, I'll just let them do partial weight bearing from day one uh, or two touch. And if it's uh, three or four, I would like to keep them at non weight bearing a bit more than that. So uh, in our experience, uh, we had a, we've been, we'd been trying to study all of these uh, till about February when obviously Corona stuck and then everything got stopped. So we had assisted about 110 patients in the last year or so. And the mean age was around 26 years. Fits in. Uh, 14 patients had ramp lesions, so around 12.7% was the incidence. Uh, nine had complete lesions, which required repair and five were partial lesions and they did not need them. Okay. So if you look um, around 40% uh, more of our lesions had greater than six months and they were within their 22, 30 years of age. Uh, MRI, only five of the lesions were identified on the MRI. 
so around 35% sensitivity. The good thing is that there was no false positives on, on the MRI. It, it can be reviewed and went back. There were no false positives. The ones that MRI reported to be positive were actually positive. Uh, so take home points, I would say the MRI protocols and radiologists need to be sensitized to pick up the lesions or you need to get down and have a good look at it. Uh, the visualization of the posterior quadrant of the knee joint is an essential part. It should be like a routine part of your diagnostic arthroscopy during ACLR. Uh, the extent and stability of the lesion is a very useful guide uh, to decide if a repair is warranted. And an all signs, all inside repair with sutures through the posterior medial portal provides reliable repair. Uh, future research uh, is about functional outcome following the repairs in the extent and natural history of the untreated lesion. We were hoping to get MRI results in for our patients by one year, but unfortunately, right now, we are not able to call those patients back for the MRI. Hopefully, once the uh, situation improves a bit, we will get them in for a repeat MRI and see how it works out. Uh, thank, thank you very you, much. And, uh, thank you so uh, much. Wonderful presentation. Uh, next, I would call upon Dr. Prashant Modi, sir to uh, do his presentation on meniscus root repair uh, with a wonderful uh, video presentation. Thank you. Is my uh, screen visible? Your screen is visible. Uh, just uh, maximize it, please. Yeah, it's visible. Uh, thank you, Rosa uh, and IS for giving this opportunity to present our work. Um, talking about uh, meniscal root repair. Uh, meniscus uh, root is considered a tissue which is within one centimeter for, uh, of its attachment, bony attachment on uh, both anterior and posterior aspect. Uh, any tear within this uh, is, is within this uh, one centimeter is considered as a root tear. Uh, the prevalence of a complete meniscal root tear is 9.1% among all documented meniscal root tear in all those patients in which arthroscopy has been done. Uh, lateral meniscus posterior root uh, tear is 10 times more uh, in concordance with the ACL tear as compared to medial meniscus tear. And uh, most of the medial meniscus tear are usually degenerative type of tear. Uh, the uh, one should know the anatomy of uh, precise anatomy of uh, these roots because that helps to restore the uh, the anatomical footprint. Uh, the posterior uh, uh, posteromedial root is uh, uh, is 9.6 uh, millimeter from the most uh, prominent point of medial tibial eminence and 0.7 millimeter uh, lateral to it. It is 8.2 uh, millimeter anterior to the PCL attachment. However, the posterior shiny white fibers are in very close relation to PCL. So one must uh, look for uh, preservation of those fiber when, whenever you are trying to uh, do a PCL reconstruction. Similarly, the posterolateral root is uh, 1.5 centimeter, 1.5 millimeter uh, posterior and 4.2 millimeter uh, medial to the most uh, prominent point of lateral tibial eminence. Uh, the anterior root, uh, the anteromedial root is uh, present on the intercondylar eminence and it is about 9.2 centimeter anterior to the most anterior part of the ACL footprint. And this is very likely to be injured whenever uh, we plan to do a tibial interlock nail because many a time the entry point is through the medial root. Uh, similarly, the anterolateral uh, root is uh, having a considerable overlap on the anterior footprint of uh, ACL and it is more likely to be injured during the tibial tunnel drilling while we are contemplating any ACL reconstruction. So the precise anatomy uh, of this uh, root uh, attachment should be there in the mind whenever one, uh, one is trying to attempt a root repair. So the, what are the biomechanics? Similar to the meniscus, the root uh, helps to convert the axial uh, tibiofemoral load into hoop stresses. Uh, root tear are associated with the significant loss of normal meniscal function resulting in meniscal extrusion and altered knee kinematics. Uh, this uh, loss of uh, meniscus tissue and meniscal extrusion can lead to increase in contact pressure and uh, articular wear and leading to early osteoarthritis. Uh, posterior, uh, posterolateral uh, root has uh, uh, is, a, is also having a 
secondly restraint to the anterior tibial translation especially in a in a uh, acl deficient knee so many of the patient who shows a positive and a very vo uh, violent uh, pivot shift test usually have associated postomedial uh, postlateral root tear therefore one should always contemplate the repair along with the acl reconstruction otherwise there is a high chance of failure of the acl itself Uh, the lateral postolateral root also act as a primary stabilizer for the internal rotation in high tibial flexion angles so what are the factors for uh, uh, risk factors for having a, a root tear uh, i am talking about the degenerative root tear here one is the one uh, the most important thing uh, uh, factor is the varus uh, alignment which is present in asian population there is a significant amount of uh, tibia vera present in the metaphyseal region and those patients are at the risk of developing a Uh, middle postomedial root tear even with a small amount of trauma increased age of course is another factor and high body mass index and female sex are found to have more of a postomedial root tear so this is the classification proposed by laprade group whereas the type 1 is a partial root tear and type 2 is basically a root tear within 1 cm complete radial tear he further divided this type 2 into type 2a where the uh, zone is within 0 to 3 mm a type 2 b from 3 to 6 mm and type c is 6 to 9 mm type 3 is a more complex tear wherein it's a bucket handle tear with a radial complete radial tear of the posterior root type 4 is an oblique tear which is usually present in the posterior lateral aspect associated with the acl injury and uh, some of the degenerative tear are also oblique tear and type 5 is a root avulsion uh, fracture which is usually seen in the multi ligament setting So, what are the clinical presentation? Most of these patients don't give any uh, uh, significant history of trauma. Uh, however, many of them uh, give a history of a pout uh, felt during minor trauma. Symptoms such as joint pain are more common, but uh, uh, typical symptoms of locking for any other meniscal tear is very uncommon. Physical examination uh, reveal uh, uh, pain in full flexion and joint line tenderness. Uh, there is a, a sign described by seal at all in which there is a palpable extrusion of the meniscus during varus strain in extension when you relieve the stress the meniscus usually reduces so this is the only sign which is uh, there in the uh, literature which is specific for a meniscal root tear so one should also see a asymmetric varus uh, this could be the cause of a result or a result of a meniscal tear one should always get a weight bearing x ray and a scano preferably a scanogram because many of these patient has a tibial uh, malalignment also and uh, you need to restore the malalignment with or without the root tear to gain a successful result so mri is considered a gold standard there are certain signs present in both uh, uh, axial uh, coronal and uh, sagittal plane Uh, on axial on uh, sagittal plane there is a absence of the posterior horn just seen just uh, medial to the pcl uh, 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 film which is called as ghost sign uh, uh, rarely we can see a linear uh, radial tear present on the axial sign if the quality of mri is good and whenever we get a thin cuts uh, there is a vertical linear defect which is present in the posterior aspect of the cuts in the coronal plane which is again a sign for a uh, meniscal tear root tear uh, so lot has has been talked about uh, meniscal extrusion uh, how much is considered a pathological and it has been consensus that more than 3 mm medial extrusion extrusion is considered a significant marker for a, a medial meniscal posterior root tear this uh, more the extrusion uh, the more likely the patient have articular cartilage degeneration and uh, uh, there is a chance that patient also has a concomitant secondary root tear the treatment uh, is uh, non operative treatment is generally reserved for elderly patient and uh, with diffuse grade 3 and 4 uh, osteoarthritis and those who are not surgically fit and are ready to accept the non operative treatment minisectomy however is uh, uh, can give us short term relief in those patient who primarily have a mechanical symptoms and uh, those who also have advanced osteoarthritic changes however rest of the patient in young patient with uh, out of age grade 1 and 2 osteoarthritis all should be offer a meniscal root repair so i'm presenting a case of a 50 year old lady housewife who is having a trivial history of trauma four month back and he presented with the medial side left knee pain with occasional locking 
on examination he has a, a joint line tenderness there is no gross alignment on x mal alignment on x ray and uh, weight bearing films and there is no other uh, laxity these are the signs which have already been discussed this is the mri of the same patient which classically show the ghost sign the medial exclusion and the truncation shine so this is a short video uh, after creating the entro lateral portal one should precisely create the entro uh, medial portal with, in line with the posterior root this portal should be uh, such that it should be at the at the level of the joint and it should not be too far medial because then it is very difficult to put your uh, all the instruments to the posterior root the idea is to create a hassle free uh, passage for all your instrumentation instrumentation to the area of interest and uh, uh, after that we should first assess the uh, the quality of the tissue and the type of tear so uh, this tear looks like in a zone uh, is looks like a type 2 Uh, with type 2b or type 2c however in all my cases i do a generous uh, pry casting you can see uh, the joint starts opening up and this give me a fair idea about the pattern of the tear there are maybe a certain uh, secondary tears also it also theoretically reduces the joint space uh, theoretically reduces the medial joint pressure and uh, 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 therefore now so you can see this tear which appears to be type 2 is actually an oblique tear which is traversing far medially so this actually is a type 4 according to laprade's classification so always always do a pike resting in all, most of the patient uh, of uh, meniscal uh, uh, work now uh, i'll assess the uh, the reducibility this give me a fair idea about the tightness of the capsule and if i, I want to put my centralization stitches then i i get a fair idea and also give me fair idea to my do my capsular release now uh, after that one should also uh, do debride thorough debridement of the uh, the scar tissue present on the medial aspect uh, midline aspect one should be very precise in creating the anatomical tunnel because it has been shown that uh, non anatomical tunnels cannot restore the hoop stresses so one should use the meniscal ronger the shaver in tandem to actually uh, locate the anatomical footprint uh, a curved shaver is very useful in this uh, area because that give uh, that uh, actually accommodate to the curved surface of the posterior of the meniscal area and uh, after that you use the ring curate this instrument should be there in armentarium of every arthroscopic surgeon because it is it helps to create a uh, remove the cartilage and uh, also helps to create a good cancellous bone for a rece for reception of the meniscal root now with the help of meniscal uh, there are certain meniscal zigs also but you can use the uh, flag one acl zig which uh, uh, fairly uh, serve your purpose uh, now this is a acl zig, a typical acl zig with a flat uh, profile you can pass a guide pin at the precise site of anatomical footprint and then with the help of uh, uh, nowadays i use this is a meniscal scorpions uh, the knee scorpions or a first pass mini sort of instrument that makes work very easy i use the two loop uh, technique i use two, two uh, stitches of preferably ortho cord number 2 or a fiber wire and i uh, create a singe loop one posterior and medial and one uh, anterior and towards midline so this give me a, a controlled traction and also help me to restore the hoop stresses then with the help of a shuttling device like a chia wire or a or a or a uh, ethylon loop you can uh, railroad these uh, uh, thread to the anterior tibial cortex and uh, uh, then you st start uh, uh, giving some certain amount of traction and see what is the condition of the meniscus at the site of repair if you feel the meniscus is very tight then you have to contemplate some of the additional procedures like capsular release or certain sometime uh, the centralization stitch which has been described in the cadaveric study and has been uh, done by many of the authors recently and in this case i i am happy to do only a capsular release on superior aspect of the meniscus and uh, with that i i am able to get uh, the symmetric compression of the both the stitches at the footprint now you can see the you can see when i i give a traction the meniscus fall beautifully on the uh, site of decancellized bone so this is one way of uh, uh, assessing your uh, reducibility i always do a uh, procedure called as marrow perforation by creating uh, punctures in the uh, 
uh, intercondylar notch anterior to the ACL attachment. This enhances the vascularity uh, theoretically and uh, also helps uh, in healing of uh, the repair. So, this is another case, my old video, where I use the, the lasso sort of inst instrument. This is type, again, a complete radial tear. I usually put the lasso from above down because theoretically, uh, practically also, it uh, gives a, a, a counter surface because tibial surface is flat. If I push it from above down, the chances that it will hit the femoral condyle is very high and there are chances for an hypogenic injury to the cartilage. So I always uh, put it from above down and then it retrieved uh, both the sutures. Uh, the first uh, pierce is at the anterior and towards the meniscus root. And sec when giving the traction to the first stage, we can approach to the second uh, more posterior and medial uh, stage. And by railroading, uh, we can create a virtual cannula uh, by putting all the sutures and then we railroad it uh, uh, through the uh, tibial tunnel. And uh, one small uh, tip I want to share that since we are putting a singe anteriorly, so the singe, the, the, the meniscus is captured in the anterior part. Therefore, with the help of the probe, you need to push uh, the meniscus, the loop posteriorly, so as to uh, create, uh, to as to prevent the bunching of all the tissue posteriorly. Like in this video, you can see the meniscus is captured anteriorly. So with the help of a probe, we can push the thread more posteriorly, the posterior moves more posteriorly, so that it, the tear will actually fall on the uh, cancellous holes rather than the anterior meniscal part. So now I pull it and the meniscus reduces. This is, I think, a trip which I have learned over a period of time. And uh, this is how I do my meniscal repair. Now, this is another scenario where is the multi ligament uh, uh, case in which a patient has a bony avulsion of the meniscal uh, tissue also. So we have need to remove all the scar, create the posterior uh, tibial tunnel for your PCL and remove all the scars and uh, remove, uh, try to freshen up the fragment. And again, with the help of a first pass mini, uh, sorry, the lasso loop, I create a tunnel, I create a, uh, a, a pierce, pierce the meniscus on, from the superior to inferior part. And I pass the number five ethibon in this case and try to loop that uh, uh, stitch over the bony fragment. And I always create a separate tunnel uh, because uh, the PCL tunnel and the, uh, the meniscus root uh, tunnel are 8.2 uh, millimeter far apart. So uh, since the loop is uh, singeing anteriorly, I push the loop posteriorly over the, uh, uh, the bone and then try to pull it in, uh, through the tibial tunnel. So this is one trick for reducing the bony uh, fragment. Now the rehabilitation protocol, uh, strict non-weight bearing is uh, for six weeks is what I require. I never offer a surgery to a non-compliant patient because it has been seen that whatever technique you use, how many stitch you use, whatever configuration of those stitch are used, the, the strength of the initial repair is always suboptimal to the native uh, uh, municipal route. Therefore, you all need to understand that you should follow a very slow regime for rehabilitation protocol. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a case where there is a tension fee repair, I all usually give a, uh, allow the patient to have a passive range of motion from zero to 90 degree in the first two weeks. After two weeks, knee flexion is allowed, but passive as much as tolerated. Progression to advance or uh, advancement of full weight bearing is allowed after only after six weeks. And uh, one should avoid doing leg presses and squat for four weeks. And return to sports is generally attempted after six months. Now there's a controversy and uh, uh, regarding trans to uh, uh, tunnel technique or suture anchor technique. Transosseal tunnel, uh, tunnel technique is most commonly done. Uh, theoretical advantage of suture repair is that it avoid any trans uh, tibial uh, bony tunnels, and that could theoretically Shamalos. interfere. Last Hello? two minutes. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, last two minutes, boss. Yeah. Uh, theoretically, uh, in, uh, interfere with the concomitant ligament reconstruction and corrective STO. Uh, the suture placement, uh, the anchor placement, is the main problem with the uh, suture anchor technique because you have to create a very high posteromedial portal to get the correct trajectory. And hence, in those patients who have a concomitant grade three medial meniscus, medial collateral ligament injury, in those patients, one can give a valgus force and then try to 
enter the middle uh, posterior middle root uh, to create to put a suture anchor. Uh, there is also a uh, trans tibial uh, centralization suture technique uh, additional uh, to the original root repair. Where if you find a uh, very chronic tear and you find that your repair is under tension, you can always put a trans uh, uh, the centralization stitch from the, to the from the apex of the uh, of the horn of the middle meniscus. It helps in chronic extrusion and also it helps in division repair. So the take home uh, message is that all grade one and two. Uh, Osteoarthritis patient should be uh, with the medial meniscus, medial root tip, uh, tear should be repaired, and uh, there should be a high degree of suspicion in middle aged female with high BMI. Alignment should be given the most important because if you have a more than three uh, degree of uh, malalignment, then you have to correct the alignment by offering a HTO with or without a concomitant root repair, and always uh, try to uh, repair the lateral root. Because along in the patient who have an ACL tear, because there is high chance of failure if you leave the root uh, repair, and always follow the standard surgical technique in form of anatomical restoration of the footprint and uh, development of the footprint and uh, strong fixation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prashant Modi, for a wonderful talk on uh, root repair. Now, may I call upon uh, Dr. Rajiv Raman? for his uh, talk come discussion on the decision making of meniscus re uh, meniscus repair thank you thank you rosa and ios ias for this wonderful meeting on uh, men uh, meniscal injury and just uh, there is lots of repetition so i will make it more dis uh, discussion with a case presentation only let's of theoretical and we as we know now we are more towards meniscal saving then uh, meniscectomy because the importance of meniscus is uh, we have learned in last few decades and we have biomechanically seen that the meniscus is a very important factor in preventing the degeneration of the uh, progressive degeneration of the knee joint. So I will not go through the theoretical part. So this is the first case, 10 weeks old bucket head and tear. So Vikram is there, Vikram, is there any time limit you follow? So this meniscus tear you will repair or this meniscus will go for meniscectomy. Is there any time limit for you for the, all those bucket handle tear? Yeah, I'm usually uh, very happy. There's no time limit per se, but more often than not, I'm happier doing it within the first six weeks. So six weeks since injury, I'm happier repairing these tears. But I have pushed my limit. So we've been doing it up to three months in some patients. Uh, relatively lower activity patients, uh, you will never uh, you know, repent doing it in them. The sporting type uh, is a big question because you need larger case series to basically evaluate the efficacy. But in 10 week old, I'll definitely repair this. So, Sarandu, uh, so wh what is your say? No, the, if you follow the, if there are some sub, sub criteria put, put forward by the AOS group also, they, there's this time frame is there. Actually, if you follow the AOS timeline guide, it is like eight weeks. But now this, the, we are not following that eight weeks criteria, probably. It, if it is a, the complexity of the tier and also the zone of the tier and also the extent of the tier and the age of the tier, it is more important rather than the time. This is my opinion. If it is repairable, even if it is like three months, if it is not complex or it is just reducible, and if I can, it is in the RR zone, I will repair it. Yeah, I'm not very, 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 very bad. We uh, concerned about the time frame. If the guy is young, I will go ahead with the repair. Yeah. So I agree with Sarandita. So it depends upon the type of the tier, age of the tier, and zone of the tier, which is more important. And especially the, func uh, uh, the function outcome, the, the, whether you are dealing with a population, it's a, a athletic population, you are dealing with a, just a, 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 a patient who is having, who is going to have some office work. But most of the time, yes, now it's not earlier time limits of eight weeks is now, I think it's uh, not there. And nowadays it's up to 12 weeks. Or if it is a good tissue, meniscal tissue, more than 12 weeks old injury with more than 12 weeks injury also, if it is reducible, try to repair it if it is in the red red zone or red white zone. So, second question with, uh, uh, Vikram, so you told a very good, you, you, uh, you can see such type of some, some locked knee, it's very difficult to understand where, which one is the superior and which one is the undersurface. Any guide for the juniors or the, or the viewers, so how will you identify which one is the superior surface and which one is the undersurface? Very, very pertinent, uh, thing, sir, and, uh, something which my suggestion is just spend time on the 
इसके स्क्रो में कि when you put your knee inside because of the pressure uh, of the bundle on top, what is supposed to be convex on top, the superior surface becomes concave. But when you have adequate visibility of the complete extent of the tear and the meniscus, and you put your probe inside and make it sit. automatically when the flounces of the meniscus are done away with and the flap components are done away with which could be obstructing your vision you would be able to see it sitting in that way now when it sits sometimes it's very important that the central portion of the torn meniscus tissue has a slight horizontal component in it that means it plays up a little bit the central portion so it's very important to spend some time and and coapt it with the peripheral portion of the meniscus it usually will sit within that uh, convexity so for me it is spending more time probing it and pushing it back and seeing the anatomical way in which it is sitting there should be no uh, folds in the meniscus when it is sitting on the periphery of the meniscus and that's how i usually go by it dr sundarajan yes please i mean to add on the add on to that i mean any meniscus which is locked if you reduce it if you are able to reduce it that it has to sit back on its original position you know the bucket handle tear is not just a 1 cm lesion you know you always you have a 2 cm 3 cm 4 cm so when you reduce it automatically it reduces itself so it is easy once it gets reduced it has to sit on with the superior and inferior surface suppose if it is not if you are not able to identify with the superior and inferior surface that means it's a very chronic case here suppose in chronic cases it can roll out so in that cases you have to be first very careful whether to do repair it or not because it with any case which we get reduced and you are able to sit to the superior and inferior surface then you should go and do a repair anything which is rolled out meniscus which is like a thread thread and if you are reducing it and if you are not able to identify the surface itself that shows the chronicity then that is not a good tissue to do a repair also a good point yes yes sundar that that is the probably the most important point bit because yes. once you lock meniscus even if you reduce it and if you follow the where the anterior part is sitting together if there is no uh, mismatch on the anterior part also of, of the tear probably you know that it is it is there but if it is rolled in it is a complex tear is better not to repair yes. and the second telltale sign is rounding of the sharp border normally you get very sharp border in the face injury but if it's a neglected injury it's a more than 12 weeks or more than 16 weeks old injury you will get a rounding of the border and most of this meniscus are irreducible meniscus so sumit how do you reduce it the that technique has been shown by different speakers so what are your preferred technique whether you do it with your toker or a probe probe i use a probe i tend to use a probe i tend to use a probe and once uh, it's gone and i tend to run my probe over from the posterior to the anterior that also guides me whether there is any sort of slip or you know gives me yeah. an idea of the surface itself so yeah so, so this probe. is the important and as as, as dr vikram said spend your time spend your time yes yes, uh, yes. I think, I think I think Sumit I completely agree spending on the time how to how beautifully you can see the periphery of the uh, your meniscus because if you do the pie crusting or whatever technique otherwise if you can't see you can't repair it yes absolutely yeah. no, no, uh, another way is sometimes even the acute tears you have a locked knee i mean locked uh, tear which you will not be able to do with the probe sometimes because god has not given the same size of meniscus for everyone mm -hmm. some of them will have a very big thick meniscus yeah. but they will have a very tight joint some yes. of them have mm -hmm. a lax joint they will have a thin meniscus so yes. an experience you will know then sometimes you have a thick meniscus which will lock inside you will not be able to reduce it even in acute cases mm -hmm. so in that cases if it is in lateral meniscus naturally you have to the figure of 4 has to be tilted up more by giving a knee pressure that will open up the knee joint pressure. Like a medial side, as already Vikram showed that by crusting, anyway, you, you are going. You may need to do something sometimes for your repair, so that will also help you to reduce the tear. So you should not hesitate to do the by crusting, which he beautifully showed. Okay. Or uh, even that will help you to reduce, or so you don't need to struggle for a long time. Just another point with regards to reduction of these tears. I sometimes in these relatively chronic ones where it's flattened out, as Dr. Samantha very. Uh, pertinently put i sometimes introduce a small artery forceps or mosquito and then twist it over i use that also hold it in place and then do my repair so uh, one, yeah one more point to be uh, talking about in this is there is a gray zone in between there are chronic tears there are acute tears but there are some sub acute tears uh, which will do well when we do a repair uh, but these are uh, ones which are uh, difficult to reduce 
because uh, once you start repairing it many times uh, there are few cases where i have seen in my uh, you know training period that you repair all those things and ultimately everything comes off so that is a disaster because you have usually yeah. you have put around about 3 to 4 uh, uh, all inside techniques and everything is coming off so uh, uh, what i would uh, suggest in those cases is that what we could do is uh, we could put uh, some outside inside out uh, two sutures just pull it off just reduce it and clamp with an artery so that the thing is reduced as it in the first part and then you put in the all inside sutures and then the uh, outside in sutures so that will reduce and also keep the meniscus in its position which will not allow it to come fall back into the joint and uh, you know uh, your uh, tear shouldn't uh, the, the, the tear is completely not failed at that point uh, at this point i would just like to ask the panel how many of you are going only all inside for a bucket hand because in my practice no, 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 always no, hybrid no, 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 this message should be absolutely clear that the all inside is it is is special situation only as exactly that, that's what i'm trying to hear yeah. no 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 in, in, not for the posterior or cost involvement is also there only only in the posterior part you do the your uh, medical with the all inside otherwise this yeah. is this is not because of the industry telling that we have to go with the all industry exactly. is a one shot and just a fire and go it is not like that you do when unless it is 100% indicated don't go with the all inside it is always better to do inside out that is exactly my point keep yes and i will never do a bucket handle with an all inside no, no, no it, is, it is not it is not it is not advisable yeah. also to go ahead with the all inside with the bucket handles using four anchors is very costly i think uh, if it is uh, but posterior one you can you can't avoid you have to yeah. do it with all inside rather uh, it's depend whether you go want to go inside out or all side it's uh, yes rajiv rajiv they usually yeah. tell my juniors that if you use four anchors probably this will be equal to on tkr implant yeah, yeah definitely definitely yes <laughs> unless we operate ambani son <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so well they said by uh, uh, as uh, sumit told to so start from posterior to anterior open up the joint space and with the pro body you gradually pu uh, push it and you you see so once you are pushing it as uh, sundar sir told if it is an acute tear it will just take its shape see so it's a chronic tear then you have to think about whether it is folded you can see the whole of the meniscus has reduced well and this is very important because you can see the medial sharp margin you can see you can see the whole of the uh, uh, tear has just gone uh, has reduced well and this technique is very important start from the posterior step push the under surface in open the joint space if you are dealing with a chronic tear don't 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 hesitate in doing by cresting either on the medial side or the lateral side and most of the time it will reduce very well once you push it inside sometimes if it is a chronic tear yes as told by vikram we, you can use an artery forceps hold it and as suggested by rajiv gupta you can just hold it with a suture also to hold it in the place at the meniscus capsule junction put your inside out or all inside uh, repair technique and finally you can just uh, remove that pulling out suture so repair yes it depends you can go with the all inside technique inside out or outside in technique we have discussed in our uh, various lectures i will not not go with this so just second case so a 25 year male with a rta uh, road traffic accident and you can see the avulsion of the meniscus root, root avulsion so again uh, my question to rajiv how will you classify it rajiv what type of root tear you will tell rajiv just one second can i tell you root tear yeah. this is called only one classification it is reducible or not reducible yes 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 so it's an acute tear most of the time it's a mobile the, you can see the redness there rather than taking the all five classification of the lapra <laughs> i make it just simple whether it is coming to place or not place yeah so in yeah. acute injury that is the advantage see in acute injury you don't have to release the capsule also most of the time yeah. it's very mobile and it comes into place so it comes into place i think uh, rajiv it is a fresh one it is type 2 complete root tear mm. seems to be uh, yes oh, if it is not coming up to the body i think it is a type 2 if you can uh, show us with the proof also <laughs> so you can see here and uh, Tanendu da, what do you say on this? How will you deal with such type of patient? You can see here. Uh, 
No, Rajiv, as because this guy is young, probably it is falling in the category of probably in type three. Okay. So if it is come, if you if it is not sitting in place, it is not coming in place. Probably this will come in place as because the, 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 the this much of picture I can see it will come in place. So I will I will just go with the root repair classic way. This is I think this is three. Yeah. So it's a, it is three. Dr. Sundara, there is a, in this patient, there is a very atypical presentation. You can see here, the undersurface of the meniscal has some cartilage loss here. So how do you do, deal with such type of patient? It was a very unusual, unusual presentation. I uh, think first in my, uh, first I see in my lifetime in arthroscopy, the cartilage loss on the undersurface of the meniscus. So how do you do, deal with such type of things? You can see small cartilage. Yeah. I, I don't think you can do anything partially. Because, uh, because I think a very only thin flap of the cartilage will come off in post uh, If it is a big chunk, you can open up and you can fix the fragment. But it is all reported cases literature in the posterior uh, tibial fracture in the medial side. That is, uh, case, even I have four cases where you have a, a fracture of the posterior tibial end in the medial side with uh, ACL, uh, ACL tears. Uh, but yes. not with the lateral side, I have not seen. I don't think we can do anything with the cartilage. So you try to put the meniscus and do the repair and uh, try to save the joint as much as possible. Yes. So that was my plan also for operatively. Prashant, you have uh, shown a very good video. So how do you plan in this case? Uh, if I am not, since it's an acute case, and if I am not able to bring the torn end towards the root, because uh, like in this video, you have a significant amount of the fragment on the lateral aspect, on the adjacent to the root. So I will do an end-to-end repair from because this area is very good uh, for a vascular reason. So in acute case, in any case, uh, I will slow my rehabilitation. And if I am not able to bring the torn fragment towards the root, uh, then I will do end-to-end -end repair from the, whatever stump is remaining. And I can also use a hybrid sort of fixation where I do end-to-end -end repair and I will create a tunnel also to pass the suture from the uh, on the side to side because this area has a very good vascularity. And especially in acute case, we have a very good result in this area. I have done two or three such cases, uh, oblique tear with a retracted tear and do end-to-end -end repair and put a stitch also, a transtibial tunnel also. So that will store some amount of anatomy and uh, this area is very good for vascular. So, Dr. Rani, uh, yes. I just have a question. Now, this is associated with an ACL tear, I'm presuming, right? Yeah, ACL tear. It's and a the the ACL alignment was varus, neutral, what was it? No, it was a neutral alignment. It was a neutral okay. alignment. I yeah. think one thing we have to be very clear that these root tears of the lateral meniscus are stability uh, issues. It It's an adjunct to the ACL. So repairing them back into the position more than, you know, a protection to the cartilage is for the stability of the ACL and for it, the longevity of the ACL to ligamentize later on. Yeah. In this particular case, I think there's a lot of loss of tissue medially. So, yes. I mean, towards its root insertion. So it's very, it will be quite hard to actually bring it to its anatomical location, very anterior, very close to the ACL insertion. So I agree with uh, Dr. Modi that uh, if there is a good cuff of tissue, I'd be more interested to repair, like a radial tear repair. If not, then actually bring it as far as it can without much yeah. tension, drill a bony tunnel and pull it down. Oh. And uh, Prashant, you told the most important point. Uh, hello. Yeah, Prashant. Yeah. Yeah, you told the most important point is uh, putting it at the anatomical points. For lateral tool repair, what is your anatomical location? And, uh, how do you, uh, where did you put your jig? The ACL jig? Uh, that, uh, for a lateral root? Yeah, lateral root. Yeah. yeah posterior root. very consistent that it is uh, 1.5 millimeter posterior and uh, uh, just lat uh, medial. <laughs> to the most uh, prominent point of lateral tibial eminence. So that is my point, just posterior to the most tibial, uh, most prominent process, uh, point of the lateral tibial eminence. That is, I, I think, the most consistent point. So this is very important. And as you can see, and what are the three important points, uh, Sumit, you will suggest for the viewers that you should follow when you are repairing the root repair, the posterior root repair. The first thing is the anatomical location. You can see that what percent yeah. should be very anatomically. Yeah. Second important point. Hmm. Just anterior to the PCL and the tibial inflection. Yes. Anything more, Vikram, you want to add? Uh, Sir Nanduda? 
No, no, no. I think we, we all know that where is the lateral meniscus is uh, going to be sitting around. You can see the, you can see the footprint. It should be there only. As Prasant told you that it is uh, the lo ideal location, anatomical location, where it should be. Dr. Rajiv, according yes. to me, it is almost impossible to ever get an anatomical location. All these are cadaveric studies based on measurements. Yes. Virtually impossible to introduce an Obama ruler, measure 1.5. Because each anatomy is different from the other. So where it sits under least tension yes. and most anterior part of the uh, lateral meniscus root is the anatomical location. So that is the most important point, Vigram. Yes, I want to say that. So it should not, your, your meniscus repair, so your root repair should not be under tension. If it is under tension, it's going to fail. So this is very important and try to uh, follow the anatomical landmark. Second important point is you should create a good crater also because the whole of the meniscus should land in that crater because it's a fibrous healing. So you should remove sufficient of the cart amount of cartilage over the uh, postolateral aspect. And this is very important point. Otherwise, most of the time what happens, your meniscus lands over the cartilage. You have make a tunnel, but it lands over the cartilage. So it's important to make a good crater so that it lands the whole of the raw tissue. Uh, it lands over the bony raw tissue. There is those good fibrous filling. And the repair technique was same. I uh, We normally use either you can use an ES scorpion or you can use a uh, inside suture passing device. And that has been well demonstrated by Prashant. So I will not go through this technique, technical video. So this is a, another patient, ACL tear with a under surface of the meniscal tear. So uh, Dr. Sundar, so this is very common finding we see on a day-to-day -day practice, ACL tear, and you see there's a partial tear of the under surface of the uh, meniscus, the uh, lateral meniscus. So how do you deal in such scenario? Uh, please sorry, unmute. Sir. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sir, can you run the video? I'm not able to see the tear. Yeah, if you have, if you have a sub incomplete tear, what you call it, so you can an incomplete yeah. the superior surface intact. If the inferior surface is torn, and you have, we can put a probe and see how much it is stability. I mean, if it is a, if the whole inferior flap is comes into the joint, then depending upon the level of the tear, you decide whether to repair it or to do a debridement. So if it is in, comes in the white white zone, if it is a unstable tear, then you do a meniscectomy. Or if it is a uh, longitudinal tear, if it's on more than one centimeter, if it's an unstable, and you put a probe, if the inf whole inferior flap comes into the joint, then you do the repair. So, Sumit, under surface tear with ACL tear, partial tear. Yes. Uh, again, uh, similar. I would like to uh, probe it. If it's unstable, repair it. So yes, Sachin, Rajiv, Rajiv, I think Rajiv is pointing one thing because in the recent some studies and all the literature people are telling if there is a half sort of tear in the under surface of the lateral meniscus, sometimes you just ignore it because if it is under surface tears in the lateral meniscus which is not coming into the joint with the ACL, the healing property of the lateral size is much, much, much higher than the medial side. So if you even if you leave that half tissue which is not coming in the joint, you can leave it and it will, in the long run, it is not going to harm the patient. Yeah, they I, are also I think, uh, they are I think this type of fear is present in every patient of a uh, ACL uh, injury. If that yes. favorite type of uh, phenomena does play, take place because this area is under crushing phenomena whenever knee try to go under pivoting. So mm -hmm. if the patient, if you see this patient uh, and you do arthroscopy uh, within say around three weeks, four weeks, I think it is better to leave this because because there's a lot of marrow stimulation also because of creating a tunnel. And yes, we yes. practice a slow rehabilitation. Most of the time, they, these uh, tears get healed. Until so it I is coming within... I, uh, yes, Prasad, I have left this sort of meniscus with my ACLs. And yes. I have never yes. repented. Rather than when I started doing arthroscopy, I was... This is for the juniors. Uh, with that time also, we thought, okay, we can just trim off three, four bites. But please don't take off that part of the meniscus. If it is on the lateral side, it is going to heal and the patient and the surgeon both will be happy in the long term. Ravi, you want to say something, I think. Yeah. Hey, Rajiv, Rajiv, you want to say something? Uh, I, I agree, Rajiv. I agree with Dr. Samantha. Because we see a lot of uh, this type of tears with the, uh, on the lateral side with ACL. 
i think we should leave it if it is a stable one uh, we don't suppose to do anything they got feel by itself if it is a medial side and you are in doubt whether it is a little bit you feel it uh, it is unstable it is little bit coming in the joint you repair it on the medial side i think we should more aggressive on the medial side lateral meniscus as uh, dr samantha already uh, told us uh, they get the uh, um, better heal up with the time So Rajiv, with your, uh, Rajiv, 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 with your permission, one one point I will tell you: don't, yes, don't, please, don't, please. don't don't be given by the gold, don't be driven by the industry. Just just you put one all inside <laughs> no, here. No, we are we are not we are not. Uh, no, we are no, not. no, this yeah. is for the lighter note. This is for yeah, the lighter note. Yes, yeah, Sachin. Yeah, more than two mm of displacement intra joint whenever you are trying to pull it, and if you find that there is more than two mm of displacement, try to repair it. Yes, so, Mr. Rajiv. Yeah, exactly. My point is, if it is stable, obviously let's leave it alone. Rajiv. Yeah. The question yes. is, if it's coming in, then you need. Yes. yes. Uh, Vikram, then Sundar. Yeah. Yeah. So, just a food for thought. What stabilizes the lateral meniscus is the medial portion also. So, what an imperial tear basically signifies is it's an incompetent meniscus. Now, the lateral meniscus is the most highly mobile. So when you're moving your knee to and fro, this is actually coming into the joint. So when it is coming into the joint, would you want this to get trapped, or would you want to put in your anchor? But there is one issue with putting the anchor also. You yes. may over constrain the lateral meniscus. Yes, yes. When you put it below, you over constrain it. So you're basically between the devil and the deep sea. Do what suits you. Yeah. Sundar, final thoughts from you. Yeah. No, no. I think yeah, we are talking about the two different types. One is the medial side, another on the lateral side. Yeah. As you see that already always in acute ACLs, you have the complex lateral meniscal tear. It is very common. You have a multiple longitudinal tear, which you see many of most often when you see after four weeks or six weeks, it might have been healed. So that is a different story. When you have, when you see an eight weeks, it's healed, so you are not bothered about it. But when you do, when you see on day one or day two, only that question comes. Whether it is a complex, that is a stable or unstable. As Vikram said, if it is very unstable, when you do the flexion, it may come into the joint. You cannot leave it. So at the time you had to do the repair. As you said, if it is an incomplete tear, if you put a probe, it is not coming into the joint. Then leave it. Don't need to do anything. Yes. So that's the point. So yes, most of these is, is a, is a uh, you, you if you can see it's an incomplete tear. If you pull it. If the displacement is quite less, and the standard treatment is just debride the under surface or leave it alone, because once you are repairing the ACL joint, your joint is going to become uh, more tighter, and chances of progression of these tears are quite less. And that has been supported by the good literature review in uh, journal of arthroscopy also, which Sarnendu Dha was telling. So just debride the under surface; that will just propagate healing, the meniscal healing. So. so this so is I the think, last case yeah i think the video has hanged so just last case i think i can start with discussion the video is hanged uh, because of poor wifi uh, so uh, connection now today at my home so most of the time uh, as prashant also told and it was told by ravi uh, rajiv also so what are the factors you uh, what are the supplementary measures you do for meniscal healing it's uh, in uh, what are the uh, 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 supplementary procedure you want to do so that to increase the meniscus healing prashant over to you one is the meniscal trepanation we puncture the periphery of the meniscus with a needle and uh, that will help in getting the uh, synovial inflammation and whenever there is an inflammation the body responds it by healing secondly the marrow perforation we create a two tunnels a uh, two or three uh, micro fracture uh, port In the lateral femoral, uh, in the notch on the lateral aspect, just anterior to the uh, the, the footprint of uh, the ACL, and I think that will incite the inflammation and the help in healing of the muscle. So, uh, any other point, uh, Sundar or uh, Sarnindha? Yeah, if it is an isolated meniscal tear, then you have to be more careful. Of course, when you are doing with ACL reconstruction, yeah, you are already adding biology. So yeah. when you're doing an isolated meniscus tear, especially bucket handle tear, is the only one where you require to do an additional biologics. Where you do, so I, I always do a micro fracture in the uh, notch. I think I think most of us, all of us, do. The only question is to add a fibrin clot or a BRP or the bone marrow aspiration. Again, it's a debatable. Uh, unless you have, of course, if you have a facility to do that, you can add on that because it is not going to harm you. But if you are not believing that, I. Uh, You don't need to do that. In my opinion, I mean, I I do just micro fracture in the notch. 
then clear the meniscal thing on the meniscal side also rasp it so i think if you follow the four five six steps your meniscal repairs is going to heal am i correct sundar yes absolutely sir. yes thank you sanaduta so now radial tear not very uncommon to see in our clinical practice so sumit how do you deal with this radial tear so the radial tears i tend to use uh, again depending on how how much to the extent it is and if it's uh, how much of a hoop stress is going on i would write i repair it usually with the scorpion so i take bites on both sides and then pass it through and tie a suture on uh, not on the under surface of the uh, tear so sundar resection repair and leave it alone how you decide in radial tear so, so there are three procedure yeah. so if it is uh, depending upon is an uh, acute uh, traumatic tear or is a degenerative tear so the radial tear you can see in degenerative tear also it is yes. very common to see the degenerative tear um and the osteoarthritic patients these patients usually will not have a complete tear very rare but you can have but most often you see the uh, uh, incomplete tear mostly in the white white zone you no need to do anything for that but in a uh, traumatic tears most often if it is in complete then you have to do a repair if it is in white white zone within 3 mm or 2 mm you can just debride don't do more than than what is required it is very important the radial tear i have some slides to show i i will show you one case of uh, radial tear i have it okay. in my discussion all right the, then i will leave it, leave this one because we will have good discussion with radial tear with your slide also yeah. so i think the videos i think the bandwidth is poor the video is not running i think shundar you can start sharing your yeah. screen okay. so what is important all tears are not same so customize yourself with the type of tear yeah. this is more very important and your whether you will balance the meniscus you will repair the meniscus it depends upon the type of the injury the age of the patient and the duration of the tear which is very important okay okay thank you thank you rajiv for a nice case and we have really had we uh, inter good interaction with all your cases so sundar you go ahead with your case yeah, yeah. thanks rajiv for giving at least 15 minutes time for the for my discussion yeah. <laughs> most of the part was covered I and mean, covered and all the talks i got to keep on jumbling my cases yes yes <laughs> to see what i was... i also skipped lot a uh, lot uh, i i skipped lots of slides yeah i know so yeah. i understood that i mean in between i was also doing the same thing juggling the case <laughs> so just we'll try to cover because we may have another 20 minutes only yes uh, so we are, we try to have a discussion minimum and uh, well commonly we'll come to the point and we, i will show some maybe some three or four cases then we can finish it off so this is a 44 years old male patient uh, presented with pain and giving way of the right knee for one week duration he had a twisting injury of the right knee um, these are the movements of 90 degree, 0 to 90 degrees and uh, anterior dryer and lackman's grade 2 this x ray mm. because he is a 40 years old uh, x ray uh, nothing uh, specific actually as we discussed uh, this patient had acl tear too this patient had acl tear i'm not putting that mri picture so you could see the uh, coronal cut of the, uh, the same patient uh, if if you, if you can see that is on the right side is the medial side left side is the lateral side uh, maybe you can see here the sagittal cut you can see better so any one of you uh, want to comment on this uh, cuts cross sign positive smith yes uh, sundar if you see if you see the coronal cut i think there is a posterior horn tear of the medial side the other is on the lateral side The yeah. lateral side is a coronal cut. This coronal cut is a there's some extrusion is there. But if you yeah. go to the sagittal cut, can you go to the sagittal? Yes, because yeah. this is the triangular triangular side of the deviatal condyle. So this has to be the medial side. So this is the medial posterior of the medial medial is. Uh, so is, you can yeah 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 you can see so what kind of tear which you suggest uh, as per the MRI, Samata. So you yes, yeah, this is a great this is a great three tear. Yeah, to what kind of tear? Any idea? More likely to be a a root tear. Yeah. So, 
so you can see this is not as close to the joint it is almost because because you see if you see go, go back to the the corona because we are seeing less pictures yeah so okay it's okay i will show the arthroscopic pictures so it is easy to see now oh. so <laughs> you can you can see the uh, tear now yes now we can see it's the tear yeah. yeah so we, we know that it is an because complete uh, radial tear it's supposed traumatic i as already told this patient also had a acl tear so because of the uh, we are going to discuss only meniscus so what do you want to do because we see that this so is not the, 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 there you see the gap gap of uh, maybe around 3 to 4 mm of a uh, gap so what will you how do you proceed is a 40 years old also also the knee is in the x ray it is looking arthritic is it not very this is only 40 years old 40 but years you can see the cartilage years I mean. old but still there is some you see the cartilage, cartilage, cartilage is looking pristine but in the medial side right. and the patellar side also there are some osteophytes right. but doctor sunna can we see a bigger sort of gap in the... sorry can we see a more picture of this tear a little bit bigger so that we can have idea of what yeah. for arthroscopic picture yeah, yeah. Arthroscopy. This uh, we can have more large. picture of arthroscopy to have a better idea about how to go with this tear. I want to see the video. I think it's a it complete. It's a large radial tear, acute tear. So you should repair. You should. Uh, I think we should uh, go with the scorpion and uh, uh, yeah, try to get uh, side to side all inside repair. This is what a young patient with uh, radial tear going up to the capsule. We should yes. try to preserve whatever we can. Now, and it's a crisscrossing pair. You are in this particular case. I think yeah. the biggest issue here is the tissue loss between the uh, yeah, exactly. meniscus end. Now, if you do a side to side repair, you're more often than not going to make your repair intention. And over a period of time, it's going to give way. So, my preferred technique will be something like a root repair, but I will take with bony tunnels in the middle and take bites from both ends and make them come into that bony tunnel. That would be my preferred method. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there are, I mean, uh, that is another technique which is uh, described in the literature too. That would be a more uh, robust uh, repair uh, for any radial tear. So I think we should agree with all the faculties. I mean, any radial tear, if it is in complete, especially in acute cases, you, you will be able to do the repair. You should not think there's a tissue loss. Most often it will be a retraction. So if, if you don't repair or if you see the cases late sometimes, you will not be able to do a repair because many times when we see, when you see the patient after six months of AC reconstruction, many times you will see there are complete radial tear with a big gap, we will not be able to do repair. I agree that we should be able to do the uh, repair of these cases at uh, as much as possible. Of course, we are told about the indications, we discussed the technique. The two techniques which you think about, one is the side-to-side -side repair or we can do a uh, a, a, a bony technique which he uh, like Vikram, Vikram told but in this case uh, yeah, which we try to do uh, through the ass like uh, so, uh, I think uh, Smith or somebody has suggested we yeah. try to do the side to side repair but it is not very easy as he suggested it is not very easy because we need to do a, a small flap in the uh, close to the root it is not easy to cap cap yeah. capture with the knee scorpion but still, it is worth to have the uh, uh, have the knee scorpion because any ACL uh, uh, reconstruction, uh, if you are doing an ACL re reconstruction, it is important that you should have a knee scorpion. Without knee scorpion, we cannot do a deal with meniscus because many cases you can deal with uh, uh, knee scorpion alone. Yes, he's also had published this kind of techniques. The, so it's good to do have a knee scorpion. So to do a side to side repair. Most often, because it's, this meniscus has got a very good approximation, do you think, because acute cases will not have much tissue loss because of the retraction. And if you see the ones just to do approximate, does the approximate very well. If the one, we can add a two stitches like this that will, that will have a very good uh, closure of that meniscus and they tend to heal very well. So it's very important with all the radial tear, you should have these, uh, you should not hesitate to do the repair with the knee scorpion with the two, at least two horizontal stitches. This is the or the same uh, kind of uh, tear, but it's a different patient. As you see here, it's not only this a complete radial. Sometimes you may think that's an incomplete radial tear. Unless you put a probe, you will not be see. This case is a PCL case, PCL case with a complete uh, uh, radial tear. You can see here, it is not just radial. You can see it's an oblique tear, but it's going through and through. So here. There are many ways we can do the repair as he suggested. We can do like with the knee scorpion, you can do a side to side. 
or in this case what we tend to do we did an uh, um, uh, horizontal mattress technique by using the all inside so that approximated the uh, red zone of the stair um, as you see in the video you can see that uh, one horizontal tear which approximated the uh, superior flap of the uh, complete radial tear then you start doing a inside out technique whether you do a two vertical or a two horizontal you can do whatever uh, is possible this is a one of the horizontal uh, inside out this is an another inside out uh, horizontal repair so any radial tear Uh, especially in the mid, this is the, this is not close to the root. This is almost in the body and the posterior horn junction. So here you may require a more stability for the repair. You see, so you should not hesitate to uh, add more number of stitches, at least two horizontal or two vertical along with the horizontal, like a hash, will give a more stability. So here we had used two horizontal. and a, uh, all inside on both superior and inferior so here almost we used to four stitches because it's young chap so the radial tears are very very important it is reported in literature around 14 to 15% of all the meniscal tear and majority of involving the junction of the middle and posterior horn of the both the sides especially the lateral meniscus with the acl injuries at a, i think in the mri you should be able to identify with your club sign or the gauss sign if it is in a completely displaced or club signs this is the mri findings which of club sign which you can see the uh, radial tear and you have to be very careful when you suspect the uh, you have to be get your armamentorium ready with your uh, this thing yes already rajiv discussed with this is the radial tear where sometimes you tend to see the small radial tear with the white white zone where just you do the debride this part don't go uh, to the normal tissue because the tear extending beyond in white zone is very very uh, you have to be very careful so should not extend beyond the depth of the original tear because the meniscectomy to reach a stable stage they decrease the joint surface area by 75% the prognosis will otherwise will become very bad because if we don't do more and more debridement it increase the compartment uh, peak load contact stresses by more than 350 so as already showed instead of a horizontal uh, as i showed it instead of two horizontal stitches sometimes the cross stitches have a more stability as it as uh, published published in the literature we can use the two uh, cross stitches they have a more stability than two horizontal or you can use the two vertical here and two horizontal also like a hash so that have have a more stability that are published in the literature or another technique which vikram also suggested where you can use the tibial tunnel that also will have a more biomechanically they have a more stronger hold than the just side to approximation with the horizontal stitches so we should know all these these techniques to address these patients is very very important this is an uh, another patient of 40 years old patient twisting injury uh, presented with the instability and uh, as you see in the mri uh, you can see the coronal and the sagittal uh, section because of the time constraint i will go to the uh, maybe the arthroscopic picture it's a lateral meniscus root tear we can already uh, discussed but you can see this is how it was presented so how many of you will operate and how many of you will not operate because this can lateral meniscus root is not completely radial tear it's avulsion with menisco cap your femoral ligament is intact um, prashant or uh, vikram will you do a repair i would, uh, I would repair operate of... on this i would fix it back i am yeah. is this associated with an acl tear sir yes sir associated yes. with acl tear i would i would yes. repair it back. okay anybody won't do any repair no okay so i think so this is debatable because uh, so there are some believe that because it is got a menisco capsular i mean menisco femoral ligament attachment because many times mri will not detect the lateral meniscus root avulsion like a medial side so many people sometimes even the found in arthroscopically they tend to leave it because they say that it is functionally it is not going to give any any indifference coming uh, compared to the medial side so however you have to see that the function of the lateral meniscus and the menisco femoral complex they are very important in conversion of the axial tibio femoral load to the hoof stress and they are important stabilizer of the knee during anterolateral and pivoting motion and also has reported to act as a primary stabilizer for internal rotation to the higher flexion angles so in the clinical examination may reveal sometimes you can have a high grade pivot shift if you have a uh, lateral meniscus root tear 
or you can have a lateral joint line tenderness that can have a more pain on the deep flexion sometimes commonly missed in mri that is true because many we do arthroscopically only we see because of the menisco femoral stability it holds the meniscus in the position mri will not reveal it so most often it is a silent one so high rate of missed lateral meniscus lesions and it is very important that you mri if you had be carefully you can look for the uh, uh, for this uh, finding because it is absent we are not able to detect because of these findings because of the uh, many times you won't see the ghosting you won't see the extrusion of course popliteal artery obscures the signals and the size of the tibial slope will not show that and also there are some studies have shown we can see this is a normal pressure of the uh, tibial uh, femoral contact pressure when you have a posterior root along with the menisco femoral ligament with the acl intact the same thing if it is a torn lateral meniscus root with the meniscus femoral ligament is torn we can see the contact pressure how much is increases if you do only acl reconstruction and if you don't repair the lateral meniscus root with the acl which they have shown you can see that contact pressure is so much it is not reduced at all so it, you can see that when you do a repair with the acl reconstruction that almost the pressure is negligible so i think it is important that there's a uh, You, you have to do the repair, so I don't need to go to the classification. All of you already discussed. So, how many of you do any? Any of you do a reverse notch plasty in these cases, or how many of you will do any anchor? No. So, I think most of us, I think, will agree. Will do the most of us. We as like a posterior side, we do through the uh, suture pull out technique. So it is important that you can have a high anteromedial portal to assess. That is very important. One of the important point when you do the lateral meniscus root tear, reverse notch plasty. I don't think anybody had done that. Uh, I mean, in the literature, it is described in the literature, but I have never come across to do a reverse notch plasty for uh, lateral side. Even the medial side, I never do because you do a bike resting, you will have a good space on the medial side. The same way, the lateral side, you will have enough space. So you don't need to do a reverse notch plasty, but if it necessary, you can do that. But you have to be. Uh, if you are doing an anchor, there are technique two with the two portals. But uh, that is also another technique which you can do it. Otherwise, we can do it like regular technique, like how we had showed on the medial side. You do the prepare the crater very well. Make sure that you have a well placed uh, tunnel anterior to the meniscus. Should not go too posterior. That is very important in these cases. So do the uh, because I don't want to go to the technique already has been described. Then you do the complete the repair. So if you see that uh, the studies had shown that retrospective analysis of the studies were with repair and without repair of the lateral meniscus root, they have found that there is no difference in the functional outcome for two years. But however, they could see that increased cartilage changes in the conservative group. So that also put you on these patients may can go for an orthotic changes the later date. I think even though the functional difference is not there, I think biomechanical pressure, contact pressure is going to increase and can have a long-term effect. So better to do the lateral meniscus root tear in young patients along with the ACL tear. Uh, better to repair it. This is a 22 years old patient, uh, road traffic accident, pain and instability of the right knee. Um, again. This is the ACL tear along with the radial tear of the lateral meniscus as the posterior bone. So I think so. Here you can see as he as he Vikram told the last case. You see the long gap over there. It is a so in these cases there is no enough uh, uh, tissue to hold on to do the site <laughs> repairs. So better in these cases you bring it to the uh, tibial tunnel and try to bring it into the anatomical area and uh, reattach it so that that uh, it will heal with the remaining tissues because here. The, the remaining tissue has got attached to the menisco femoral ligament, so it's very important to get close proximity to this bone tunnel and attach it here. This is a 44 years old male patient. He had a history of fall from two wheeler. Uh, he has a 15 uh, days duration, I think. Uh, this is the history, Lachman positive, um, and this is the X-ray. It's absolutely normal and complete ACL tear. So why I'm presenting this case is uh, again the same kind of lateral meniscal tear, which is one of the most common finding which you see. He has got also MCL tear. This is the common scenario which you see. Uh, even though the one more case was shown before, uh, uh, Sumit or uh, Prasant, what is your comment on this uh, tear? This is an ACL tear, acute case. I mean, 15, 20 days old. 
there's a rate this a type of uh, according to lapradel's classification this seems to be a bucket ended tear with a lateral radial tear tear of the posterior horn uh, near the root and there is a bucket ended tear as well so uh, the concept is to right. stabilize the root and do a bucket ended sort of uh, repair using a all inside or all inside out type of you have to first uh, reduce the root you have to first fix the root and then you create a torn uh, bucket handle into a classical bucket handle and you repair it upon here in this here the root is almost not uh, much uh, uh, avulsed over there uh, most of it you hear you most of the compass this is uh, almost like a, a radial tear on the superior radial flap tear. you can always see this this flap you can see here it is a, this is the root the root is not completely avulsed but you see this is the flap this is the most commonly seen torn uh, i mean uh, type of the complex tear of the lateral meniscus in the posterior horn along with the acl uh, i mean as you suggested is one of the type uh, most often this flap will be very very unstable as you see here um, here in this case uh, um, it is not easy to do the repair by just doing in side to approximation here you see that sometimes you can change the repair pattern by doing the cross stitches the cross stitches sometimes this posterior superior flap can be avulsed from the remaining uh, capsule in that case you can do sometimes all inside one one more all inside or uh, two or all side all inside then to do the side to sub, uh, side to approximation by using your knee scorpion so instead of the horizontal sometimes you do the figure of eight like stitches that will help you to give a more approximation and gives the uh, more stability so we should not ignore in this uh, complex tear as sometimes in these cases if we see on the lateral i mean sorry uh, lateron sometimes the may say repair may not looks very beautiful what you uh, see in the normal bucket and the repair because the repair is i mean sometimes the tear is also ugly so the repair has to be <laughs> ugly but you have to put a, uh, as much as close approximation of the figure of eight uh, this is one kind of technique also can help you to approximate Uh, uh this meniscus um, uh, apart from your because it's not easy to do a repair of the, uh, the regular all inside or uh, or uh, do you or, or any other faculty suggest any other methods uh i agreed with dr sundar in such type of uh, complex tear if you do repairs uh, at the time of uh, surgery it doesn't look like but if you do a re look arthroscopy after when you are all 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 get uh, covered with some good uh, tissue uh, i think uh, the message is we should try to preserve on lateral meniscus irrespective of type of tear whatever you repair it will be there and it help you in the future if you have to do the partial meniscectomy then the tissue will be going to remove is will be less in the future absolutely rajiv because they are very very unstable uh, tear yeah. tear so if you don't do a repair naturally this part and this part going to get separated of course naturally this contact pressure is going to increase in the future the so many because times you see when you operate the acl in the later stages this kind of tears if they're stable they would have healed very beautifully sometimes if it is unstable you can see the big gaps between the uh, posterior horn root and to the other uh, uh, part of the meniscus so really uh, uh, this is sundar hello yes sumit sumit go ahead sumit sumit uh, dr sundar in this uh, if there is a it's more like a radial with a cleft it's more like cleft and there is possibly going to be some amount of vertical separation as well at the periphery as well so you would first get the radial slab down and uh, close up the cleft and then go for the uh, vertical here so that is probably the because <coughs> that will help you out although that's more easier said than done but yeah that yeah, yeah, absolutely i mean this horizontal tear you can close it first as and you can approximate that's what that we have tried yeah. first for this case because of the fragility of that inferior we can see this is not a very single flap it is a very exactly yes yeah. so what we try to do sometimes whatever the remaining the tissue good quality quality of the tissue we try to take bite uh, take a horizontal over here like you take a, a bites over like this then we brought it here and you took it here okay. and we, like it's like a circlage wire so we could approximate that whole uh, complex tear into the single unit and we could approximate it as we all of us know that lateral meniscus posterior horn has got a very good blood supply so this approximation and protection for the 6 weeks it's going to have a great deal in healing of these kind of injuries so we should try to attempt whatever the type of tear is a radial tear 
it's a complex tear or it's close to the root it has to be repaired the idea of showing the first four cases uh, and the point is like any posterior horn tears on the lateral side they have a good capacity of the healing so it is important that you should address uh, whichever is possible the techniques doesn't matter it is important that you approximate that ends and do the, uh, suturing yes. and this is what the final repair of the uh, case uh, can i go for one more case Second. Maybe I will. Yes, Sundar, go, go ahead. Go ahead with your other case. Last one. This is a 30 years old, uh, 30 year old patient. Uh, he had a pain and giving of the left knee for three years duration, and has uh, aggravated the last seven months. Uh, he had a lot of pain. He had a twisting injury, the two wheeler, long back. That is a seven years. It's a seven years history. All of you, I mean, you know. So uh, I think all of you agree that any patient present to you with after seven years with the ACL injury, you had to see the alignment X-ray to, to know this patient has got any virus deformity, any arthritic changes. So to address for any alignment uh, procedure. So here in this case, uh, almost is normal. So we don't do address anything. The MRI finding, as we see here, uh, anybody wants to comment here? Uh, comment, uh, Smith. Uh, so, so yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So there is definitely a loss of complete loss of ACL, and uh, the roots are not really visible onto the X-ray. So there's yeah, bilateral. Even on the, you can see in the coronal section also there is there is loss of that uh, yeah. black configuration going on to the root part. The, even though alignment has not changed, you can see the quality of the meniscal tear that yeah. is also not very 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 good here. So. Uh, how will you counsel these patients? I mean, you know, I mean, as we said already, I, I talked about the bony point. I mean, bony point, if you have a virus alignment, you have to do an IT bill astrotomy, that point which you have to take in, in this case. Uh, regarding to the soft tissue, uh, uh, to address the soft tissues, uh, uh, Vikram. So this has some element of chondral changes also. Yes, yes, he has got it. So there is, this is a degenerative. Yes, yes, yes. He has got a degeneration. There is no it's doubt about it. I think thing. looking at his alignment, his alignment looks pretty good on yeah. both sides. Yeah. He's, he's more or less neutrally aligned. Correct. So basically in such a case, I will say my prayers and, and, and rely more on counseling the patient rather than anything else. <laughs> now how do you understand? So, I'll try to pull on with this knee for as long as possible. So yeah, you think already the TR is, TR is more or less like three, uh, three years? Yes. No, so seven already years. seven years. Seven years. Seven, seven years. years. Seven years. Seven years. Now, what are the complaints? If you, complaints if you, of instability. If you see the complaint, he complaint, complaint. He has got on and off instability. Last three years, pain has increased, but still he has got yeah. too. In injury, injury is seven years. The pain is symptomatic for last three years, and it, probably if you see the see this coronal uh, thing, it is more or less like. Both the menisci roots are gone, the, the ghost sign okay. is there, and also the chondral change is there. Seven years injury, I, I, I will never touch it to go ahead with the ACL reconstruction for this guy. You can see that the lateral side, the meniscus is very poor. You can see the gap between the meniscus here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the kind of patient where if you don't operate on the first day, you don't repair the lateral meniscus, they will end up with the gap like this. No, this is a chronic case, naturally. So, but yes. the decision is symptomatic, you cannot leave it. What will you do? He is a very young patient. Samada, so you, do, you told you don't operate. Yes, I will refer. I, 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 I will, I will refer to some senior guy who will just don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 where we will refer in Calcutta? Then, if Samantha sir will refer, <laughs> refer it to Coimbatore to Sundara. <laughs> Samada, you are the senior most guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Problem just in a lighter mode. I am telling, but problem is the main is the counseling because if you touch with the scopy and if you do a ACL, this guy is going to be stiff and mm -hmm. he will be running around with a. Every week you will be coming to your follow up, and he will tell I am not satisfied with your operation. Okay, any so that is the problem. Any one of you agree with Samatha that you leave it? Leave it, leave it. Present. Yes, yes. Most of the time, we actually after research reconstruction, these knee becomes tight, and a patient comes with pain. Yeah, knee he, has pain. A, he has got an instability and pain. How can you leave it? He is a third. He is a very young patient. He is a uh -huh. second decade. Uh -huh. Dr. Sundar, Sundar if, uh, if you, if you uh, it, theoretically, theoretically, thing is, uh, Saurabh, go ahead, Saurabh, please. Yes, no, Rajiv is, uh, Rajiv. Yeah, Rajiv, please. If go patient, is, uh, ahead, patient has instability, 
with neutral alignment and he is uh, young we should do diagnostic if it is a uh, more uh, problem of instability i think we should go for uh, acl reconstruction because whatever you give in his stability that is good for him because uh, if you leave it as such he is going to get the arthritis so fast if the main complaint is uh, instability because of acl injury i think we should go for that irrespective of whatever the satisfaction rate uh, is going to have he have i got okay Rajiv, the main problem is you are your main problem is that we can go ahead with the ACL reconstruction, but this satisfying this guy even after the ACL reconstruction he might be stiff. So this is a plus plus situation. This is a really 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 we are in a fix for this case. Okay, as uh, as uh, some of the I think uh, we 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 also should take some more other point because the whole thing is started because of the ACL. I think all of us agree. Yeah, some uh, some injury, some meniscal tear might have happened at the time. Some other injury might have happened of the frequent instability. However, this patient is having a problem for the last seven years or three years. Got worse. He is in very bad shape. So I think we have to do something for him. We have to do an arthroscopy. We should try to do a repair. Even this is a meniscal injury, even this is a chondral injury, whatever possibly biology which we can add on to that and be helpful for this patient to postpone his uh, no his uh, future uh, knee replacement because he has got neutral alignment. We can't do any bony procedure. So in this patient, if you see, even though you see seven years, even though three years, you see the cartilage. This is a medial side. I'm not uh, I'm not putting the lateral yeah. side here, but you can see the completely extruded meniscus on the medial side. you can see the root is completely ours there is absence of the tissue over there it is completely retracted you can see here also i'm not i have not put the one more uh, i mean lateral side lateral side as i already showed in the mri coronal axial cut there is a gap in the lateral side we cannot do anything so already lateral side you ruled out so in this patient the medial side still cartilage is very good he has got neutral alignment you cannot leave this patient like that So you can see this patient. We have done the root repair. You can see the good, very good tissue because it's still young chap. It's a seven years duration. By seeing here, you may think that there is no tissue over there. But you do a release on the inferior and post uh, surface of your like a ramp. You try to release that, and if you bring it, you can bring the root uh, to the attachment. So hopefully, by doing the ACL reconstruction, by adding the uh, uh, medial meniscal uh, root and the uh, extrusion correction. can help the patient i don't know because it's going to help really how much, how long we don't know but uh, i try to uh, do uh, i mean uh, uh, save the meniscus as much as possible try to reconstruct as much as possible luckily his cartilage is still intact so you can see these patients by doing an acl reconstruction and adding the root repair doing centralization procedure definitely helps his anatomy back you can see here i use the double loaded anchor over here it's, as you see here sir this is a double loaded anchor so i done already it's like a, a bank art repair you can do this techniques is very easy you have already knee scorpion so take the bites through that and do the push the knot uh, away from the meniscus to the capsular side then you can see at the end you, once you do this anchor and bring the meniscus to the uh, original position you can see the like like a normal meniscus position you don't uh, ask me how is the uh, long term outcome of this patient because i think we have done uh, around one one and one and one, 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 one more than one year now so i have not done the mri i have not seen this patient has not come follow up after 6 months but you can see this after the final repair next The cartilage looks very good. Very good. Very I good. suggested that's the right. cartilage will be very bad. Here, the ultimate cartilage looks very nice. The cartilage looks very good. So that's why this we should try to uh, now address as much as even these patients get some cartilage defect. Then you should try to see if it's a focal lesion. We can do a, some even good ACA procedure will help or uh, any micro fracture or mosaic plasty. So these patients we should not neglect and try to address this both. Uh, Uh, meniscus and cartilage lesions that is very very important this is the final picture of this patient you can see the acl reconstruction you can see that uh, medial meniscus repair you see the good cartilage and uh, up to the root this meniscus sitting very well i hope that this patient does well hopefully if we postpone the arthritic changes in the later date thank you sir Maybe with that case i can finish it yeah thank you thank you sir thank you sundarajan sir for your good presentation uh sir ramathur sir and dr rahul katta sir please take over sir uh
बोले सर आप प्लीज नहीं नहीं ओके on behalf of Rajasthan Orthopedic Surgeons Association i would like to thank indian arthroscopy society who has organized this webinar and i would also like to thank all the speakers rajiv vikram sumit prashant dr rajiv raman and dr sundar rajan for very good presentation very nice case discussion and at the end we have a good number of take home messages out of this webinar i would also like to thank our moderators the coordinators and dr samanta from ies to be present and having a nice discussion on this webinar thank you so much thank you from moza i hope we'll have two more cmes in future as well thank you thank you so much thank you thanks thank you thanks so much